know we go live every Sunday noon Eastern time to talk about the greatest players to play the game of basketball and to talk about the greatest of the NBA in general. So thank you for joining us on another great Sunday afternoon. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button because we go live right off of the GOAT James Kingdom channel where we drop nothing but great videos and materials about the GOAT of basketball none other than LeBron James. And today's show, we're going to talk about how Tracy McGrady basically described LeBron James as the greatest offensive player of all time when he was describing his greatest player mm -hmm. built. So if you guys haven't heard it yet, you should go check out Tracy McGrady's page because he talked about how you put together the greatest player of all time. And we're going to discuss that today. So again, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Also, don't be afraid to become a member of the channel as we got a few new members. We got Chad as a, I mean, not Chad, I'm sorry. Uh, Travis is a new member. We also got um, Wayne as a new member. So thank you guys for joining us as far as, far as being a part of the GOAT James Kingdom platform as we will continue to grow and show you you guys why LeBron's the GOAT of basketball. So we have our normal panelists as we see here today. Shout out to everybody in the comments. We already see you fellas. Thank you again. So let's get it going. Uh, what's good fellas? Uh, what up Brandon? What we got today? What's good? All right. So we heard, I don't think not too many people heard what, what Tracy McGrady said. Um, we're, we're, we're not going to play it, what he said, but we actually have, have the list of what he said. So let me go ahead and bring it on. What he um, described as the perfect offensive player so body lebron james 6'9 260 something the the mentality is kobe bryant over jordan mm. shooting mm. stuff handles kyrie passing lebron athleticism vince carter defense better world peace and iq lebron james so this is trace mcgrady's perfect um basketball player so let's Let's go ahead and um, start off with, um, with with Travis. So, Travis, just looking at this um, list, how accurate is this that Trace McGrady said? Uh, not accurate at all. I would have LeBron in every single category, like without question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like it a lot. It's just uh, like you know, it's hard to it's hard to actually nitpick everything because I mean, obviously, if we have this guy with all these act, he's gonna be unstoppable across the board, but. I mean, if, if I'm just trying to perfect it, I would definitely, uh, I mean, I don't think he's a better passer or somebody who had IQ vision. I would maybe even put IQ vision to get Larry Bird. But Magic Johnson were passing for sure. But hard to argue with uh, Vince Carter. Uh, defense, I'd probably put some a little bit more proven there. Uh, I mean, obviously, we just talked about that. So, I mean, perimeter defense there for talking about it, then obviously we can, you know, we talked about it. You can have, uh, I'd honestly put Jordan there as far as defense, but maybe a mix. Hakeem, the GOAT defender. Um, IQ, talked about that, but otherwise, it's hard to argue with it. Definitely mentality of Kobe, you know, best shooter in the world, Steph. Um, either way, this guy's going to be a monster, so <laughs> you can mix and match. All right, um, John, what you think? One of the reasons I agree with the defense is because of LeBron's body type. Matter World Peace almost fits perfectly with that. So it's almost like perfect for me. Um, I, was, I wasn't surprised with the mentality of Kobe Bryant because a lot of people from that era, what Jordan would have regularly been slotted at, a lot of players from that era wanted to what really want to put Kobe. From that era. So I'm not surprised by, I'm not surprised by that at all. Um, but it's, I mean, that's what you want. I mean, you got LeBron, LeBron body type. I mean, LeBron passing. I mean, I'm with Travis. You might as well just put LeBron down. These, I mean, <laughs> you should have said, you should have said 2018 LeBron. That's it. It just let it go. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, I agree with him. All right. Um, Oh, yeah, well, it was good to everybody in the chat, Adrian, as well. Um, what about you, Johnny? What, what you think about this perfect list from Tracy McGrady? <laughs> I mean, listen, when I first saw it, I was like, wait a minute, LeBron James? Okay. Kobe, Steph, Kyrie, LeBron, Vince Carter, Meta World Peace, LeBron. So he named LeBron three times, not just twice. He didn't name no one else twice. He, didn't name, he named LeBron three different times. So instantly off his mind, He's naming LeBron with Kobe's mentality, 
and that can shoot like like Stephen Curry and got handles like Kyrie basically because LeBron's a better defender and a better athlete than Vince Carter and, yeah. and Meta World Peace. So at the end of the day, he just described LeBron James that can shoot like Stephen Curry and who has the mentality of Kobe, which is basically don't care about nothing but being the greatest player ever. You know what I'm saying? And then and then uh, Kyrie's handles. He basically described the greatest player ever and, and and missing some of LeBron's, you know, I guess there's really no flaw because LeBron has the mentality to be the great player. He has the, you know what I'm saying? He has the handles. Ain't nobody robbing LeBron. He's, and he can shoot. I mean, he's not as great as Stephen Curry or, or any one of the other guys, but he just... This year. Huh? Johnny this year, he's shooting better than Steph Curry from three. So <laughs> listen, the man, the man can do everything on the basketball court, man. That that's why Tracy McGrady said to him three times out of nine different categories. And they didn't even give him a category. They just said, Tell us what's your greatest player. Like build us. And he he gave us the nine categories in each player. He was like, You give me a guy like that, I'm averaging 45. And I, I think he that player could average 45 in today's NBA. <laughs> so um Johnny, so just look look at that list. If you could put Jordan into some of them, where where would you put him at? Popularity. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Travis. This is a giant one. Ask you a question. Where <laughs> where, where would you slide him at? What, Popularity what wasn't put, even on the list. It wasn't on the list. Let me say what what, what we gonna put Jordan in it for? What? That's where? why. That's why I asked you. Like where? Shooting. Where? Shooting. Wait, Shoot. why? We got, I got Stephen Curry. Okay, Shoot. where else? Okay. Shoot. Shoot. That's why I said popularity. What okay, else? with what, Tracy what? McGrady's list, Travis, uh-huh. where would you slot Jordan in? Well, obviously, I mean, I think Jordan was better than LeBron defensively. You know, we can cut corners on that, but I just think overall he is, and I think the numbers will bear that out. But, I mean, if we're if we're just cutting – if it's LeBron's body type that we know he's going to be there. I mean, athleticism, I mean – I mean, you could you could say any one of a number of guys. I mean, I think Jordan was probably in his peak, one of the more athletic guys ever, especially his first four or five years. But I mean, you could say Tracy McGrady was also. I mean, ironically, but Adam was were, were, were more athletic than Vince Carter. Yeah, in different ways. You know, like jump high is different than just body control overall. You know, Vince Carter had that as well. I think so. Of course. Yes. Body control. Have you seen this guy play before? <laughs> you got body control. I think this yeah. is the But uh, if, if we're just yeah. doing Jordan, then I mean, you could. I mean, you could just say, I don't think he's in, he's better than. Obviously, aside from defense, I don't know who I'd slot in Jordan other Nothing. other than. Yeah, you know. Jordan's not better than Meta World Peace defensively. He definitely is. <laughs> All right, uh, John. On on that list, where where would you uh, replace Jordan? Like put Jordan in, replaces someone who's on that list. I was being honest when I said shoes. I was really being honest. See, oh, no so, so nowhere. See trolling. Nowhere. <laughs> That's all nowhere. For what? For what? I mean, I mean, where do you fit? I mean, it's nowhere to fit Jordan. I mean, I think Vince is a better athlete, but I think you could have used LeBron as an athlete. Um, mentality. I I go Kobe over Jordan. Um, yep. Shooting Curry yes. handles I mean, Kyrie. Well, I, mean, I, I I guess the only thing you could put Jordan in is in the mentality and the the defense. Those are the only two slots that Jordan could occupy. But you know it's a toss up between Jordan and Kobe. Most people probably pick Jordan because most people are Jordan fans and defense. I think majority of people will pick Jordan because they believe Jordan's the greatest defender of all time. That's not saying <laughs> it's true, but that's what majority of people believe. It's a key. No. But most people think it's Jordan. Far is a key. Man, yeah, most people yeah. put Jordan up there, but like like uh, Tracy McGrady put the best defender of his era. To, yeah. In his mind, Ron Artest is the, the greatest defender he ever seen. Not Mike. I don't think he was even better than Garnett. Honestly, yeah, but no, I mean, I, I, I'm, I don't think he's using it as a big man because he didn't use mm. no big men. Yeah, well, he's, he's talking like about the perfect forward. player. So the perfect player is not going to be a center, or or a power forward. It's going to be yeah. like he's it's going to be a a, a a wing like player. A stretch it, forward. It's, it's going to be a wing player. I just don't think it's going to be a center because LeBron is six nine. 260. That's I mean, if you do ask somebody in any area what's six nine two six, that's a power four. So I think it's basically just... and, and, and that body type, you need a versatile defender. And Jordan was not as versatile defender as some players. I'm not saying exactly. that doesn't mean they're better. Like Paul George is a more versatile defender than Jordan. That doesn't mean he's better than Jordan. 
He's yeah. just more versatile. He's bigger. Like I always said that if Scotty Pippen had like a better offensive moveset, he probably would be the prototypical player we'd always point to. Yeah. I mean, that would that would have been the player to put he, there, Scotty Pippen. Yeah. He was that. That's what Scotty Pippen was. Scotty yeah. Pippen did invent the idea of being a point forward for a reason because he was multifaceted. He had a lot of skills offensively. He wasn't just a scorer. He could score, he could pass, he could rebound, he can he can get your offense going, he can do so much. He can do so yeah. much. Yeah, and he can guard one through four. Yeah. All right, so um, just looking at that, um, you know, the title is LeBron James is the greatest offensive player of all time, which kind of what Trace McGrady was trying to describe in our minds. So Travis believed Jordan's the greatest offensive player of all time. I'll, that's that's not a question. So we want to know from Travis, why is Michael Jordan the greatest offensive player of all time? I don't even necessarily think he's the best offensive I just think he's, like, one of the more consistent offensive players of all time. I think, to me... Um, I mean, I could, I could say that he is because he was out of the gate shooting 50 plus percent until he started falling off, which was like 11 years later. I mean, other than the most dominant centers of all time, who came out of the gate and was that consistent, just uh, efficiency wise, like their first eight, nine years, LeBron didn't shoot over 50% until like what year seven or eight. I mean, nothing against him, but he, that's when he found his overall bag, uh, I think is going on from there. But you could, I mean, you can say the best offensive players are those guys who are well, like, the most well-rounded, and unstoppable. Truly, like you could say, Shaq. Um, well, well, who do you think is the greatest offensive player of all time? I'm going to say Jordan. I'm going to just say Jordan, just because Jordan. I feel like he moved the needle in that regard. Uh, he had the best bag I've ever seen, as far as um, fadeaways. You know, you know Tommy, I'm mad at you for not saying Will. Going right. Yeah. Going right. Will. Going, I mean, all right, all right. Oh, hold on, Travis. What <laughs> makes Jordan have the best bag? Because I'm, I never understood this thing that they talking about. Jordan had this bag, bag of what? Okay, Two so blocks. if you if you watch Jordan a lot, next, I mean, okay, him and Kobe, in my opinion, have, as far as this, as far as just getting their spots, uh, they were incredible off ball. Uh, they had lightning fast first steps. Trace made great to an extent. He was just slightly less efficient too, but they had they perfected the fadeaway to a large degree. Their mid range game was well above average usually. Um, obviously, we can't measure that for Jordan's entire career when he was or, or especially good at it, uh, early 90s. But uh, they could score from anywhere on the point. They weren't the best three-pointer shooters, obviously, but they were serviceable when they were taking them. Uh, their back-to-basket game was second to none, especially among guards and forwards. So when you watch all these things, they could score in those variety of ways. It just made them especially difficult to defend, um, and the percentages really bear that out. Um, obviously, were, were they going to give you... 45 and 10 on 80 percent shooting every night no but when you're talking about when you're talking about just ways you can score on different varieties from uh, everywhere on the court there's only a few guys that we could point to that can do it with as much consistency i think as they can just my opinion okay, okay. all right um john who you think is the greatest offensive player of all time if i'm gonna go outside of lebron i'm gonna say will chamberlain um i mean what what is the argument for not Will Chamberlain? I mean, what is the I, argument for Will Chamberlain? What what did he do to make himself the greatest offensive player of all time? He knew what he knew what he did great, and he attacked that all every game. I mean, it was no stopping him. I mean, he he had the little fade away. He can get to the basket easily. Um, he knew he was bigger than everybody. He used the size. Sometimes uh, I get mad when people actually don't use their size. Against against defenders, Wilt used his size, and he dominated, and he was consistent at it. One one of the things to me, when you attack the greatest scores, you have to be consistent. You can't give me one year thirty five and then you consistently a twenty four point score for your the rest of your career. Wilt was consistent, and he decided he made a decision because I'm mad at the media that I'm gonna pass the ball. I'm mad at the media, so guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pass the ball. I may have won him a championship, but he start winning more. Yeah, when I, mean, he yeah, yeah. I mean, but I mean, he was very consistent. He attacked. He he knew what he did great. He was a great athlete, and he attacked it. Um, I wish I could watch more of his have watched more of his games, so I could really break down his game the way I would want to break down his game mm-hmm. and see. I, I want to see his bad games, and like, okay, what did you do that day, and what could you have done better? 
uh sometimes we get got to see some of his good games and it's like um uh, you you read about it but i i would want to know more about his bad game see it visually and see how you would attack will and how can he attack and what's best to describe him often i read a lot about it and i mean you could look at the stats and say oh this is what he did but because he this tall you know i want to see it visually and i really wanted to break want to break down his game and uh I can really, really barely describe that better at that time. It's, it's such it's such little film on him that you really can't describe it, but this film you got, he just did what he did great. Okay. All right, um, Johnny. Mm-hmm. Who is the greatest offensive player of all time and uh, why? It, it It's really tough. Depends on what you value. If you value scoring, it is Will Chamberlain. If you value all-around game, it would have to be LeBron James. Um, for me, I, I value the all-around game more and the high IQ that LeBron James has over Wilt Chamberlain. As dominant he's, as Wilt Chamberlain was, he didn't have a high IQ in basketball. He just did what he did. He was just a freak of nature. He was just the greatest athlete we're probably going to be able to talk about for the most of our life. So I give Wilt Chamberlain his props for dominating as far as just knowing how to score the game and, and then even, like I said, just being skilled enough to even pass the ball. But I think Wilt Chamberlain didn't know the idea of playing team basketball. And I think that's what an offensive player is great at. And, and LeBron being as a, a good perimeter player and a point guard on top of that, he's just, yeah. I mean, we ne- we, we've never seen a, a guy who can pass like LeBron, score like LeBron. That's just the difference. And that's what makes him the greatest player ever. All right, um, Travis. Offensive player okay. ever. Yeah, yeah. offensive. So Travis, uh, I'm gonna throw out some um, offensive at- attributes. I want you to say if it's LeBron or Jordan. Um, sure. Driving. Uh, probably LeBron. Paint scoring. Uh, Jordan. Okay. We have close though. That's tough. In, the, in the paint. The paint's the paint. So I see playing just in that area because I think he had a better back to basket game. But fade away. I think he was quicker in his prime. But if we're just talking at the rim, then it's LeBron. And the numbers clearly I mean, state that. The paint. You're not really posting up in a too far in a paint with big man. So Fine, let's kill LeBron. Right? <laughs> yeah, I'm just, it's just a paint. No, don't <laughs> paint. switch up. Don't switch up. Y'all use the same thing. Jordan was posting up everywhere. He was posting up at a three point line. He was posting up in the. <laughs> he was. Yeah, all right. All right. Uh, mid range. Jordan. Okay. Long range. I mean, you got to say LeBron. He was just the number say he was a better three point shooter, except when Jordan took three or more per game. So. Okay. Yeah, it's just, you know, the errors. Um, efficiency. Uh, it, it, it's still LeBron efficiency wise, just by the numbers, but I don't necessarily agree with that. Okay. Well, I guess we can only go by by the numbers at that's the true. moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, that's all we can do is go by the numbers. Uh, passing. LeBron. I mean, <laughs> you want to? Fight I can't really make an ball. argument for Jordan. Oh, I know, that, I know. Outside of just not being objective. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Uh, the Le- LeBron do pride himself on more of being a passer. So. He does. Yes, he does. He's a top um, five passer of all time. <laughs> IQ. Um, that's tough because I think you could you can say Jordan, but I just think they had higher IQs in different ways because LeBron more, like looks to get his 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 team involved in a more I mean, more readily than Jordan did. Jordan was looking to play better defense. He was looking to you know, how could he excel at the offensive end? He wasn't necessarily looking to be, like, the best pass. Although he could do it, he did, he did a number of times. But I would still say LeBron. But if we're just talking about overall IQ as far as getting your, your team involved and, you know, doing the X's and O's. But as far as, I'd say, offensively and defensively, just scoring and, and you know. Well, this is just up, um, on, on the offensive end. It's just on the offensive end. Sure. So. I mean, I'll say LeBron, too, because I think he was – his passing really indicates his – he was – he had one of the best IQs in league history. We talked about that. Okay. Um, you are not doing a, a great job for Jordan Travis. But <laughs> <laughs> last thing, um, ball handling. I honestly think Jordan was a better ball handler, honestly. I mean, if you look at it, I mean, that's that's really IQ test, but – or not IQ test, but just eye test in general. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Jordan wasn't fantastic, but he could dribble at both ends. He was good at getting to his – especially on the break. Um, and you know, one on one, he was above average at a two, especially uh, 
in his later years uh, from or the last three peat. I think really, I think developed that he wasn't gonna, you know, do Iverson type levels up there, but I think uh, overall he had slightly better handles, and that bears that out. Okay, all right. Um, I don't think Jordan had any type of handles, but um, John. Okay, <laughs> let, let let me start from the top. Driving. LeBron. Paint scoring. LeBron. Mid range. Jordan. Long range. LeBron. Efficiency. LeBron. Passing. LeBron. IQ. LeBron. Ball handling. LeBron. Oh. Okay. How can you say right. Jordan? How can you say Jordan? And for at least five seasons, he didn't have a left hand. I mean, <laughs> you, you know, oh my God. Yeah. That's I mean, even, the case. No, no, no. Even Kenny Smith said at North Carolina, Jordan weakness yeah. was ball handling. He couldn't handle the ball. I mean, players were saying that early in Jordan career. He couldn't handle the ball. That was his weakness. I, I believe LeBron James in the 10th grade was a better ball handle than Jordan ever was in his career. Yeah, I mean, and so it's kind of hard for me to say Michael Jordan was a better ball handler than a point guard. <laughs> when, I, when, when I think of ball handling, I played point guard growing up. I ain't thinking cross crossover. I'm th I'm, I'm thinking they you can control the ball, you can handle it. I mean, your weakness. I mean, defenders ain't coming up and just straight ripping you up like that. Uh, I'm not thinking crossing over and all that stuff because I mean that's just a part of the game. Uh, that's to create space. But um, I'm just thinking about handling the ball, and I don't well, think sure, I mean, we're just talking about ball. passing it to the open guy, of course. But I mean, if we're just talking about getting your spot better with the ball, getting around defenders as an offensive player, then I don't see how you can make an argument for Jordan or for LeBron, because Jordan, especially if you watch a lot of his games, especially like later on, like Jordan was more than efficient at doing all those things. He has fewer turnovers than LeBron, especially on the. Uh, just one on one too, just not not even throwing it to your guys, but I mean, Jordan was just a better ball handler, like in general. I mean, no, it's... see, I think I, you know, you know what Jordan has done. Jordan has really um, taken NBA fans out of the idea of what basketball is about, bro. A point guard's job is to get the ball to a certain spot, not for him. You're right, Jordan could get to his spot to shoot his shot, but Jordan is not dictating the defense with his dribbling skills he's he's seeing where can i go with the ball and then i'm gonna go there can he do that greatly yes he's a lead at that but being a point guard is different there's a role in being a point guard a point guard has to get the ball to a certain spot on the floor for a certain set to be run for a certain action to be done so you you can't be dictated by the defense on where you're going to dribble the ball so as a point guard you have to be able to have good handling ball handling skills to even be a point guard because you have to get to certain spots on the floor to run plays. So you the idea of the ball handler is the flashiness that people love to talk about. That doesn't make you a great ball handler. A great ball handler like a Maurice Cheeks never needed to dribble between his legs. Maurice Cheeks got the ball to the right spot so that everybody could be in their position. Every, the defense couldn't stop him. But Stockton, you could not steal the ball from John Stockton. He, You could not press him. He was not crossing you over. He was not doing nothing like that. He was going to dribble up the court and get to his spot and nothing you can do that's ball handling because he has possession he's handling the ball he's controlling the pace of the game so it's two different levels of ball handling and jordan fans think iverson kyrie jordan that's the ball handling tim hardaway nah man y'all really... wouldn't put jordan with those guys <laughs> I'm like, no but i'm just saying when you think about jordan dribbling and you're trying to compare it to lebron that's what you're that's how you're seeing it because oh, no. i said that if it's just about you know obviously all that stuff that you mentioned like mm -hmm. that's that's lebron's one of his strengths is like passing high iq things like weaving, that. i'm saying but like weaving in through traffic you know what i'm saying splitting oh, yeah. uh, uh splitting uh the, the double teams yeah. you know what i'm There's saying a lot things, of levels to it yeah that's what i'm saying and lebron could do all of those things and sure. he, you know what I'm saying? So he and he doesn't get ripped. Nobody's ripping him. Nobody's like, yo, uh, I mean, eh. I mean, we seen Jordan first... get ripped. You want to talk about, you, first... eh, you wouldn't do no eh when we were saying Jordan left hand. <laughs> hey, nobody's <laughs> perfect. I mean, <laughs> yeah. One of the first things, one of the first things Phil Jackson did when he became coach was take the ball out of Jordan's hand and yeah. put it in Scotty. That was sure. one of the first things. I think did. people forget though that Jordan, it's not like Jordan averaged like 31, 6, mm -hmm. and 0 for his career. 
No, okay? no like, he, averaged, he had five assists guy, right? No, yeah, he Jordan, was over five. He was almost six assists a game. And like, it's like, Jordan, okay. Jordan made point guards and centers useless, basically, with the way he played <laughs> basketball. The Bulls had point guards that couldn't be point guards. They had to be shooters. They well, talk about LeBron James. That is yeah. exactly what, what what they say about LeBron. Like he, he exactly. makes his guard useless. But most people don't like LeBron is a point on the offense. Michael Jordan wasn't a point on his offense. Yeah, Jordan made a lot of point guards look horrible. BJ Armstrong and all of them couldn't play their natural position as point guards because of the way Michael Jordan was as a player. BJ That's why they needed Scotty. That's why they Scotty was the, the the dynamic because you didn't need a point guard with Scotty. Yeah, BJ became a. <laughs> corner shooter that's what bj became and, and paxson john paxson yeah. sam vincent all of these guys bro all of these guys mm -hmm. okay so um so as as we look at what these two have done all time we see that lebron numbers is trumping jordan's and you know totals so just as look at um you guys travis even though this is just totals and not averages how would you put this in a per game sense of why Michael Jordan was a better offensive player than LeBron? Well, like I said, I mean, as you guys and we all know as actual basketball fans, there's a lot to offense, you know, points generated, yeah. obviously, there's a lot. Um, to me, I just look at different things. Like if we're just talking about, okay, offensively, I, if we're just talking points and assists there, then I could argue that Magic Johnson was the greatest offensive player of all time just because he would shoot over 50% every single year. He would give you between 18 and 23 points a game in his MVP years and, like, 14, 15 assists. I mean, he's going to be, especially, like, when uh, Kareem started falling off and Pat Riley was like, okay, cool, I need you to drop 30 a game for him, but also run the offense and give me 20 assists and outscore James Worthy, who is probably, you know, a top 10 scoring small forward of all time. And you do that, too. So we could say that, but I mean, I'm just talking about if you're going to score the basketball, do it efficiently, efficiently, and you're not a center, and you're still shooting over 51% for your again during your prime, and that prime lasts 11 years. Nobody else is really going to touch that under those circumstances. And so I think that again, we talked about his bag. Did he have the most flashy bag of all time? No, but he was so cerebrally sound as far as his back to basket game. His first step was great, getting to a spot as a scorer his mid-range game, just being accurate with the fade and the jumper overall. Mm -hmm. That was, I mean, I don't think we've seen that combination as far as, I mean, you could say Durant. Durant, I think, was maybe, back if we're just being the like the top three, three-level scorer, it was probably maybe Kevin Durant. But I just, I look at Jordan and I see all those things. I see the efficiency. Obviously, the volume is, I don't really count that as being a negative because if, even if you lower it, he's still going to be wildly efficient. And I don't really care about his points per game as like as an indication of like his he's the best scorer of all time. But I just think that if you're talking about the entire package, uh, it's either him or Durant as far as as efficiency goes and their ability to score the ball from anywhere you want. Obviously, you could say LeBron because he's insanely consistent and now he's wildly efficient. But I would take those guys if I'm just talking about the best scorer. Okay. All right, um, John, let me put it back up. Looking at this, even though it's totals, what's the argument for per game that LeBron James is a better offensive player if you're just looking at points and assists and basically what he generates on the offensive end? If you look at the numbers, you can't make an argument for Jordan at all. I think the only argument is the eye test. And when even when you say eye test, it's – the way is the mindset of scoring. Jordan was going to score. His 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 job was to score. It was got his job was to put up as many shots as he can to score. That's the only argument. I mean, LeBron is going to have more than ten thousand more points than Jordan when he finished. I, I, we talk about the regular season total. I think LeBron's playoff total is going to be harder than his. Uh, regular season total two pass. I mean, I mean Jordan was number one. I mean LeBron has got him what three thousand points. Now, I mean, that's gonna be the harder one. But I don't think it's an argument when you look at the numbers. Jordan doesn't have an argument. If you took away the names and nobody knew and they looked at just the numbers, even if you go if you show uh, averages and totals. 
how do you have an argument for Jordan at all? At all. I mean, it's like it wouldn't even be close if you took away the names and you didn't know who the player was. But if you look at the court, look at the games, Jordan's looked better and Jordan was more aggressive to by himself, I'm putting up these many points. Okay. All right. So, Johnny, just thinking about what both of those guys did on the offensive end, we know totals is LeBron James. LeBron James totals, he's um, top four in points and assists in regular season, top two in points and assists in the postseason. Just looking at what they did on a per-game basis, how would you relate those two offensively? Or who, who would you give a nod to offensively on a per-game basis? Yeah, no, uh, before I answer that, uh, shout out to Ishmael for that super chat. Uh, he put down, hell no, Jordan had one hezzy, which he used to travel on. <laughs> if you let Jordan fans tell you, LeBron h handles this more. Uh, I mean, obviously, I'm going to give LeBron the nod because, like I said, it's about a team concept, a team game, understanding how you can affect your team the best way to be the most efficient, you know what I'm saying, player on your team. And LeBron's just more efficient offensively as far as to assist the turnover ratio. So his passing efficiency is better than Jordan. We all know he shoots better than Jordan as far as efficiency-wise. He also scores more efficiently than Jordan does. So he does all of these things on the basketball court. To answer your original question, uh, the only thing that can make Jordan better offensively is offensive rebounds. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that's big, though. That's big, though. That's big. Apparently, there's something new that they started talking about a year ago. Offensive yeah. rebounds. I, yeah. I never knew it was such a big thing until now. Yeah. And they search for that. They search yeah. for something. They need you know, it. they they actually discredit defensive rebounds and elevate offensive rebounds. <laughs> they discredit assists and, and praise offensive rebounds. That's the craziest shit. <laughs> All right. So, um, so let's look at the points generated. So Jordan was great. He generated 40.6 points per game. LeBron, 43.9 points a game. In the playoff, Michael Jordan was a beast. They're almost the same. Um, LeBron edges him out by a tiny bit. But the thing with um, Jordan playing so long ago, points created was not there yet, even though they didn't shoot too many threes. LeBron James, I think since 2014, they started um, – adding those things in there. So majority of half of LeBron's career, they didn't include three pointers. So LeBron James would definitely be higher in that sense. Um, probably pull more away than Michael Jordan uh, points per game generated. But as we see LeBron James on the basketball court generates more points than Michael Jordan. He generates more points than Magic Johnson. He mm -hmm. generates more points than Larry Bird. He generates more points than everybody on a per game basis. The GOAT. Yeah, that's how that's how great LeBron James was. <laughs> if we talk about offensive player, uh, we already gave the attributes. Even um, Travis, who believed Michael Jordan is a GOAT, gave the offensive attributes to LeBron James. So when we're just looking at now. offense. Yeah, I feel bad. Yeah, when, when we're looking at <laughs> offense, it's kind of hard to say that Michael Jordan was a better offensive player than LeBron when LeBron – he does have more turnovers, but his assist to turnover ratio is higher than Michael Jordan's. Um, he's a tad bit more efficient. He's um, a better three point shooter, long range shooter. Gets to the whole still year 21, what he's doing right now. Still, nobody in NBA history has averaged 25 points per game, eight assists while shooting 50% from the field. And 40% from the three-point line. So LeBron James is doing what he's doing in year 21 greater than anybody in NBA history today. And that's how great of a of offensive player he is. Good it's, goal. You know, that's is one of the things why we call LeBron James the greatest player of all time because of what he's doing year <laughs> in and year out. Just like last show, we show what LeBron James does year, year in and year out in his career is one or two players every year has done what LeBron James has done. And LeBron just continued to be great. And year 21 still set the bar higher than anyone else in NBA history. All right, so um, so you guys, wanna, oh, we can open it up to um, everybody in the chat. Let me put the link up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You know what we do here in the Goat James Kingdom channel. 
We bring it like none other, man. We keep explaining to y'all. LeBron is just a great basketball player. You guys don't want to accept it. You want to cry in the comments. I see him crying now. They're over here crying about me saying, oh, one scoring title in 20 years. Again, Michael Jordan had four NBA seasons where he had a true shooting of over 60% for that season. LeBron's done that nine times. That's over twice the amount of seasons Jordan was able to shoot 60%. If you understand basketball, 60% true shooting is super efficient scoring-wise. So he's just you better know, than Jordan. You he's know, better. That's it. One, one of the things, I don't believe Michael Jordan fans, um, not all of them, but most of them don't really care about stats. They don't care about they don't. They accolades. Don't. They they only care about their, their eye test and mm -hmm. 10 scoring titles and three steals titles because majority of them will say that Michael Jordan was a GOAT after his third title. And after his third title, Kareem had more MVPs, um, 38,000 points, 17,000 um, rebounds. He had more assists, well bore blocks, yeah. shot higher percentage. Like I said, six titles, those MVPs. He, he had one less finals MVP. He had two compared to Jordan three. But they still say that no one would say that Kareem was the GOAT in 1993. Like, don't, don't want to say it. Because they, they don't really care about other players. They don't care about what other players did. They don't care anything about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. They don't really know his career. They really believe that no one has stated that Kareem was the greatest player of all time. They just believe whatever – the Jordan fans say, and what they say is gold. Yeah, they, the, the, they uh, the argument the argument against Kareem is yeah. the media. That's the yeah. argument against Kareem because if you listen to a Jordan fan and his argument for Jordan, they just repeated what the media said. That's the yeah. argument for Jordan. I mean, you they just Steve, yeah. You look at Stephen A. Smith. He said he would never say LeBron's better than Jordan. Like, he doesn't care. He doesn't care about anything but Michael well, Jordan. But that's what I was going to say is because the GOAT conversation is media driven. And being yes. that Kareem comes from an era where there wasn't mass media and there wasn't a large media, uh, 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 basically fan base in the NBA, he never got the praise when he retired in 89. This is the official GOAT. Let's leave it at that. These are the standards. You got to do what Kareem did to be the GOAT. They never did that. They just, the media came in as, like I always told y'all, the mass media during the, the late 80s and the early 90s that grew with, with cable television allowed Michael Jordan to be the GOAT because they were the ones promoting the GOAT standard. And they were saying, this is it. It's Jordan. We saw Kareem. Or, well, they never saw Kareem. They just said, this is it. We're seeing it right now. He is it. Just like we're doing it right now. Here it is right now in our eyes. We're watching it. The same eye test you're using for Jordan, we're using for LeBron, and he's the GOAT, not Jordan. Man, so like, we, don't the, we don't need the stats. Yeah. Off the uh, eye test, LeBron's the GOAT. Like, like it's, it's great to say Michael Jordan. They've never seen a player as great as Michael Jordan, but to I have. you have to have a, a standard to be the greatest of all time. You just can't say someone's the greatest because the way you like how they play. Like, it's kind of hard to say, okay, Michael Jordan's the greatest because of of this when others have done it better. That's 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 my stand. Like Michael Jordan is the greatest because of of what? Ten scoring titles. Well, Mo, three steel titles. Mo, Mo, no, because he, he didn't have ten scoring titles in ninety three. Yeah, yeah, if, okay, we're going by when they declared him as the GOAT. We have to have something to say why he's the GOAT. Okay. Yeah. Like it's fine to say Michael Jordan is a goat, but tell us why. And we have brought so many people up here to tell us why. And our best answer is from Travis, who who just would not let go of these advanced stats. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, most people argument for Jordan is the goat is to talk about LeBron the whole time. I mean, I mean, they don't need well, talk and, about yeah. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and when we tell them, okay, we understand you think he's better than LeBron, but why is he the greatest player of all time? <laughs> They like what? What you talking about? This is Gold James Kingdom. Like, why well, I have to say he's better than everybody? But Brandon but see, said that, it that's best. That's why I got so fed up. That's why I got uh -huh. so fed up with Ryan last week, because I had to make sure he understood what the goat debate was. Every time you have this conversation with someone who's a diehard Jordan fan, it immediately revolves around two players, and they don't have the understanding that you're talking about the history of the game. I can look at the history of the game and say LeBron as a point guard. He can be considered the best point guard ever. We're going by his position, small forward. I can't find a better small forward than him. Like I heard y'all, I've been listening. Who really controls the pace of the game 
and gets his players and gets his teammates involved that's, that's better than that LeBron. And, and, it's going, that and it's going to right and and it's still going to produce what he produces at, at at a high level that's why he's the greatest and they don't want to hear that there's not too many players that are this versatile and this elite in almost every aspect of the game and that's what they don't want to get i'm comparing him to every player I, I, and also the thing is if, if we came out and say lebron james he trumps michael jordan is in a sense that's why he's the greatest the first thing they're going to say is it's not like he's john stockton he has the most assists. he's not magic johnson is that, like exactly, he don't average exactly. 11 assists a game like magic johnson how can you say just because he has more assists <laughs> that he's better than jordan like that that would be their answer but when <laughs> but when we try to say like six titles is not the most well why you gotta bring in somebody else to help out LeBron, like right. we're not helping out LeBron. Yes, everyone would say that Michael Jordan won more than LeBron. That's not a secret. That, but that doesn't mean Michael Jordan is the greatest winner of all time. Unless you're saying LeBron James is the second greatest winner of all time. Okay, we, we can have that conversation of um, since Jordan came to lead, who is the, the the greatest winners. But if we're talking about all time, we have to use everybody. We cannot just cut years from people. Cut years from LeBron. He's still- he cut years from the NBA history still, just to he, make a case for Jordan. Yeah, Robert he's still Orton. not the greatest second winner either because I would still give that to Kareem. I mean, there's more people who won six as well. So there's, but if you're talking about leading your team, like that's another conversation, even though that may not be Michael Jordan, but we could start that conversation like that. That's just how they, they don't know how to start the conversation of why Michael Jordan is a GOAT. I know Kareem won without Magic. Jordan never won without Pippen. That's the facts. <laughs> That's the facts. So let, let, let's let Twin Man Sturdy and Ishmael uh, get a chance to speak on today's topic. Again, shout out to everybody in the comments. Y'all go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Also, check out the membership in the Goat James Kingdom channel. Y'all know we are also going live on Facebook. So shout out to everybody in our Facebook group. We just reached 85,000 members there. So shout out to us and everybody in the Facebook group. But you know we're on TikTok. We're also on Twitter. We're on Instagram, which we're going viral on Instagram all of a sudden. Now, everything we post on Instagram is going viral now. And uh, shout out to everybody who follow us on Discord as well. So, Twin Man, you got a chance to speak a little bit, so we'll let you talk about Tracy McGrady. Um, do you think Jordan fans are going to hate on Tracy McGrady for his list? And what do you think of, of his list of the, the greatest player built that he put together? Well, to answer the first question, you already know the moment they put LeBron in too many categories or if they speak LeBron <laughs> in a positive light in any way, he will be despised and hated. If, if every last one of those answers wasn't my <sighs> hate, let's be real here. Anybody, anybody, everybody right now on this mm-hmm. panel and in the chat rooms, know I'm telling the truth. Any player who has said anything positive about LeBron James, it does not matter the circumstance. They are now delusional. They they are now hated. They they hate Scottie Pippen, and Scottie Pippen won six championships with this man. <laughs> Like, so you think they're not going to hate Tracy McGrady? Yeah, somebody in the comments what, what, already said Tracy McGrady's a bum, just like LeBron James. So, <laughs> so, so, go, so go ahead. So let, let's talk about Tracy McGrady and, 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 the, and the player he put together. How great is that player Tracy McGrady put together? That player could be the greatest player of all time. Easy. Basically, look. LeBron, basically, LeBron with, with Stephon Curry's shot and, and Kyrie Irving's handle. That's basically what he's described. That's basically That's what he's basically described. It. That player could yeah. be the greatest player of all time. You've just given him an improved jump shot. That's, That's basically oh what God. you've done. You've just, given him an, you've just given him a better jump shot for his entire career. So instead uh, of 40,000 points, it's probably like 45 right now because he gets more threes. Let me, let me answer this question before I let you get in sturdy. Exposure. Can you react to the comments made by Steven Jackson saying LeBron d- didn't have the dog in him like Kobe and Michael? I say the same thing I say about all the players that say that about LeBron. They never took the dog out of LeBron when they were facing him. What did Steven Jackson do when he was playing LeBron? I mean, I don't got time for those guys and what the dog got in him. Those guys are into favoritism. They'd rather hang out with Michael Jordan and the Jumpman crew than hang out with LeBron and Rich Paul and them. That's all it is. They want access to Jordan. So they say right things about Jordan, just like Stephen A. Smith went on on a podcast the other day saying Scottie Pippen didn't show his condolences to Michael Jordan, and that's why Jordan said fuck my us uh, fuck Scottie Pippen now on from here on out. 
So you Jordan fans are ridiculous, man. Stop asking me dumb questions about stupid players saying stupid shit. Because we're talking about Tracy McGrady talking about basketball. We're talking about basketball. You can't explain to me what the fuck a dog is in basketball. Don't come to me. You can't score 40,000 points without being a pit bull. Uh, uh, you know what? There's a, a Asian dog that is severely massive and big and just real vicious. That's fucking LeBron. Leave me the fuck alone about these bum-ass players who hate on LeBron. Tra uh, Sturdy, let's 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 get to you on this, Sturdy. Um, appreciate you for coming on. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, what do you think about Tracy McGrady's uh, uh, comments on the greatest player and, and how you feel the Jordan fans will accept it? Uh, salute, everybody. Um, I think, I think um, actually, it's a common preference, you know? Like, for him being a wing player, he decided to build his player around a wing archetype. So, for me, it's not surprising how you built that player. Um, especially if you are aware of how he talks about those players he's lifted, he speaks very highly of them. So, naturally, most Jordan fans have this weird entitlement of like, anytime you mention Jordan's name, you should give him praise as much as they do. And that's weird. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not self respecting But, but oh, most sorry. importantly, most importantly, um, but most importantly, it's just, it's just T-Max opinion. Um, that hypothetical player, to me, honestly, it reminds me of stories I heard about the potential of Len Bias. So those are familiar with Len Bias, you know, the Celtics, you know, doing this stuff, you know, put, you know, put, put brands on players before they even drafted, but that's another conversation. But potentially, like, Len Bias was described as the next thing that the, like a 6'8", six, 6'7", six, 6'8", six, wing, who, who was just as athletic as Michael Jordan, but with a better jump shot. And matter of fact, if you look up more in Len Bias, mm -hmm. every time him and Jordan played against one another, Len Bias dominated. So to me, that type of play, hypothetical play that Tracy McGrady built just remind me of like the potential of Len Bias. I, 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 I just, I just got, got, go one, ahead, John. Uh -huh. I just got one thing for Ace 30. So John Stockton now is a top five point guard since you didn't say anything about it. So I'm assuming that is. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, King, King Vaughn, like, that's the thing, like, I actually, like, I, I've, um, I've come to a synopsis, right, like, uh, I understand the recognition, and, like, I understand that it's not John Stockton's fault that he had 20 conversations where he simply don't belong, it's not his fault, it's just, it's similar, it's something about the 90s, King Vaughn, it's something about 90s basketball that people keep holding on, just won't let it go, you know what I'm saying, it's kind of, it's kind of weird for me, but, like, it's, but I, I try to let John Stockton breathe, but, you know, when you guys bring him up, got to let people know the truth. That's all. That's all that is. But that's, that's the thing, though. Like, that's the beauty of, like, simply – but think of, but speaking of offense, right, uh -huh. that's the thing with most Jordan fans, like, like respect the T-Perfect drivers, but, like, come on, bro. There's no argument of, of, of Jordan being a better offensive player than LeBron. There's no argument of him being a better defender. That's, and the thing is, of what the, the, some of the things we mentioned before, like, mm -hmm. I don't say eye test, I say film. Because film shows, just like the numbers, it shows facts. If I say LeBron James facilitate the offense on his team, that's not an opinion, that's a fact. If I say uh, Scottie Pippen is a great communicator on defense, that's not an opinion, that's a fact. So when I say film, I'm saying there's both a, a perfect blend of the numbers as well as what's shown on film. So in discussing who's a better offensive player, not only LeBron showed more responsibility, but he simply showed more impact offensively by doing some of those things at a higher level than Jordan. When Jordan did have the ball in his hands on the Doug Collins majority of the time, the offense was optimized because he was a scorer. Jordan would tell you this in interviews and the way he approached the game, he was a, he, he preferred to attack the game to scoring first, pass, and second. But LeBron was the opposite. Colin Cowher has this funny quote. He was like, the most the most interesting fact that he believed LeBron ever had, the fact that he went from averaging 27 points a sophomore year to, again, 27 points his junior year in high school, meaning he understood he could score, but he'd rather continue to suppress his scoring to a certain level to optimize his team. And that's what great offensive players do. Magic Johnson did it. Mm -hmm. um, Steve Nash did it. LeBron does it like a bonus of players that John that John simply... Stockton John Stockton did it. And, no, 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 I, was, I, don't, I, I you know I mentioned hey John, hey John. I'm talking about I'm actually talking about MVPs. I'm talking about actual guys that's like are better. You know what I'm saying? Just stop that. Leave the nineties alone. But the point is, 
the point is like the sitting on hold. LeBron is not only the better offensive player, the better defensive player. And like Twin Man said, it just makes people uncomfortable to say that he's one of the he's one of the few all time greats that he's great in multiple categories. We never heard people it's, it's so foreign to people to say he's the most clutch player, arguably. He's the most versatile player, arguably. He's in a conversation like this. There's, there's so many things you have to put in a conversation with. It's unfamiliar to people. And that's why they rely on lies or just skewed hypocritical bias. That's simply it, to be honest with you. And no, sorry, King John. Like, John Stockton is more closer to 10 than he is to 1. <laughs> yeah, listen, great takes, thirty. We appreciate that. Listen, man, I'm I'm reading the comments right now, and 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 we're supposed to be talking about Jordan being a better offensive player than than uh than LeBron. And all I keep seeing is shoes. I keep seeing shoes. Uh, I think you was right, King John. The only thing that could that Jordan could be added to the list to make sure that we have this greatest player that's scoring forty five points in today's NBA is that he's wearing Jordans on his feet. That's yes. what. It, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <thing. laughs> So, Ishmael, thank you for joining us and being patient, brother, man. What you got on the topic, man? What do you think of Tracy McGrady's uh, player? Would you think that uh, – c- could you build that player on 2K? Do you think that player is possible to build in 2K? Would that be a 99? Yeah, uh, I, honestly, I think his take is kind of an oxymoron because um, how are you going to have Kobe Bryant's mentality and then LeBron's IQ? That don't really make any sense. Kobe Bryant played a lot of hero ball. <laughs> <laughs> Kobe Bryant played a lot of hero ball, shooting over two to three people, and LeBron he would never do that. He he would rarely ever do something like that. And then you have Kobe Bryant's mentality, LeBron's passing. He's gonna play superhero passer. I, I just I don't think that really you makes know sense. What? You you make a good point because because LeBron, LeBron trusts his teammates well more than uh, Kobe would ever. Kobe yeah. trusts his teammates depending on what he sees in practice. And, and, and your character in general, how you take your game, how serious you take the game of basketball. But LeBron sees players differently. So you got a good point there. Go ahead, continue. Go ahead, continue. I, I think, you know, I don't know why I don't know why NBA players always refer to Kobe as the king of mentality and all this. Like, that doesn't even make any sense. It, I think it just, it kind of devalues Kobe as a person and his mm-hmm. personality and his, and his capability as a great basketball player when people – possess like oh he had this this mentality like and then like uh, like what do you mean like no other player you know, really practices and let, really yeah you know what let me let me give you something on that ishmael if you give me a chance to give you an understanding because i'm gonna help uh travis out because travis is ready to choke you about kobe bryant i think <laughs> i think the idea of kobe bryant's mentality is misquoted or misunderstood by the actual kobe bryant fans and michael jordan fans kobe's mentality wasn't just being a dog he actually understood the game of basketball. He exactly. studied, the, he studied right. the game of basketball. He understood his place. I mean, he had things where Tex Winters said that he used to keep Tex Winters up late night, just calling him, asking him, okay, yo, on this spot of the floor, when I'm doing this during the triangle, can I shoot here? Can I? You know, he really tried to figure out how he could score in the triangle offense to still be a part of the offense without messing it up. So Kobe, every criticism Kobe ever took, he took it in and tried to make himself better. So the mentality of Kobe wasn't just being a dog. It was just about absorbing the game and learning how to effectively put it on the court night in and night out. Like, that's what Kobe did. His workout ethic was for that. He wanted to be ahead of everybody else. So the mentality wasn't just jacking up a bunch of shots over people making bad plays. It was being prepared at every moment, understanding the game at every moment. I just recently saw Kobe talked about how he had to understand a teammate that asked him, the teammate said, yo, I need you to uh, trust me, something to that effect. Like, you, I, I need to believe that you trust me as, as your teammate. And Kobe was like, of course I do. But Kobe didn't understand what the teammate meant because in Kobe's mind, of course I trust you, you're my team. You know, I have to, I have to trust you. At some point, I'm gonna need you. But he was saying that it was important to the player because of that player's journey where that player came from, his background. So he was explaining how as a team leader, to be a better teammate, he had to start understanding those nuances of his teammates, where they came from, their background, their their motivation, what inspired them, how they got to this point, how they view themselves. So Kobe's mentality was bigger than just being a ball hog. So I think that that's something that would help you understand Kobe. Kobe was just a basketball player. He just loved the game of basketball. Everything he did was basketball for 20 years. Everything was all yeah. basketball. Right. I, I just yeah. think that when people keep talking about mentality, like just, yeah, what you're saying and 
it just mm-hmm. devalues the fact of Kobe's impact as a basketball player and how good he was and people just yeah. making it see oh he was just hungry and hungry and hungry it's like mm-hmm. whatever man you just saying stuff but Overall, yeah, they, uh, they did a disservice to, to us. They did. They really did. They really did a disservice to us with Kobe. We should have learned this about Kobe 12, 20, 12 years ago, to be honest. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. And, but uh, in terms of like who's the better offensive player, in terms of skill, I was watching the other day, I was watching 98 NBA Finals, and I just look at it. It's like Jordan doesn't even have the most skills as a player, like the greatest of skills. He doesn't have the greatest. <laughs> He doesn't even have the greatest pull-up jumper. Like, Ray yeah. Allen's pull-up jumper is better. Like, yeah. like I'm talking about dribble pull-up. Ray Allen's yeah. pull-up jumper is better than Jordan's. Uh, so is Kobe's. Oh like, LeBron's oh bag God. on the post is definitely better than Jordan's. Um, mm. Like, he just he just has a higher uh, uh, efficiency in the mid-range. Jordan had one hezzy. Never, I hardly ever seen him do a crossover. Hardly ever seen him do a spin. Around the back was average. Um, he, he he back to the basket every single time. Like I've seen LeBron James done endless amount of things, and people still say he doesn't have the bag, dude. It's I don't know where people are made. Like no, he doesn't have the best handles, man. I have yet to see. Like pull up a highlight reel of Jordan doing some amazing uh, high handle stuff. You can't, you can't, you really can't. Try it, Travis. Look for it. No, I the dare. Ball, you. The ball fake, man. He having the ball in the no, game. yeah. Like, like come that on, was, like. That it's was the real. ball handle. Mat- matter of fact, going to, yeah, go, to go with I'm Sturdy said, Sturdy said it's something best. H- hold on, uh, Twin Man. Sturdy said it best. We don't use our eye test. We use film. As you can see here, we're talking about watching the games. This man said he went back to 1998, the 1900s, and watched a blurry-ass video of Michael Jordan <laughs> without a left hand. So... That shit is hilarious, man. But go ahead, Israel, what you were Israel you got- probably still has a headache from watching that game, trying to stretch. It's my hell. You know what? You know what video they're gonna show you? They're gonna show you the video when he first came in the league and he was dribbling between his legs real fast, and went and tore like a. Oh yeah, in, 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 in like in, in that same set, that, that was the weakest. And they're gonna I make it. They're gonna make it seem year. like I seen him do that this year. But, I seen him in the but, game do that. But, they, but see, in that moment, they'll make it seem like that handles. And like a Johnny said, having handles is not just you being able to get to your spot. It's being able to put, you know who has handles in today's NBA? Jokic. He controls the pace of the game. He gets, he gets his players open and he can still get his shot. Jamal no. Murray has handles. Yeah, LeBron you, know James has handle, has, you know who has handles and people don't really give him credit for? Bam. Bam Adebayo. Yeah. Players like that, but again, they're not flashy. They're not like Kyrie. They're not dribbling between players and 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 doing all this crafty stuff with the, you know. Again, I still think Kyrie probably is the best ball handler of all time, without question, because it's not just like I said. It's not even just about the dribbling too. You know what I'm saying? Get to a spot, real good. Yeah, the, the finishing too. Where how he can Ooh, use yeah. and how he can contort and, and like you said, his body, you know, uh, uh, balance and and all that other yeah. stuff. So it goes into a lot. A lot of it is good. Again, nobody's saying Jordan can't handle the ball. We just basically saying, listen, man, he's well, he, y'all give y'all praise him well, and y'all give him things that he doesn't have, and that's the problem. The same with the Kobe mentality, y'all. You guys are the reason why we have to break down Michael Jordan this way because you guys keep telling us lies. It's lies after lies well, stacked well, upon lies. That's what, what I mean is, is like, I, I obviously, like, he's a he can handle the ball. Like, I, we know that ball handling and being elite at mm-hmm. uh, doing, like, special moves is different. Of, of, of course we say that, but I'm talking about just, like, talent and special moves and getting to the right spots. It was, like, it would... It, he didn't it would just seem like it was it'll be subpar in today's basketball for what jordan was able to do and like him able to get in the spots a lot of it most of it was like on the post up or he would do like one jab step before he even dribbled the ball and he got to the rim because he was quicker than everybody or more explosive it wasn't due to like he did some special move uh like in between the legs around the back spin move and get to the layup all this stuff he had to do, which I've seen LeBron do, and so that's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. When I see Jordan, it's like one jab move, and oh, he would he would go get to the rim. One jab move, and oh, a pull up or something like that. Or then he'll start posting somebody up, and he'll do a spin around J or that little, uh, or like if he's in transition, he'll do a little hezzy, and, and and it didn't really look the most fluent at all when he did that. And so it's not to talk bad about his game like that but it's just people over exaggerate like how great that's, you know why because 
that's cause that's cause to be honest with you, you're shocking a lot of people, Ishmael, but that's because you saw ball handlers after Michael Jordan. Right. The people who think the people who think Michael Jordan has great handles watch Michael Jordan. They were they didn't they saw Michael Jordan before Allen Iverson, before Tim Hardaway, before Penny Hardaway. I played against before guys in high school guys. with better handles than that, to be honest with you. And I'm not even exaggerating that one at all. Now I would say this there is nobody in the nineteen hundred that has better ball handling than today's players. So in the top five best ball handlers of all time should be players of today. It's legitimately so unless unless you're holding on to nostalgia like sturdy stays. So I will put um, Ross Strickland. I was separate. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. Yeah, like you got guys even back then who had crazy hands. Roger, yeah, Lynch, Shams, Hardaway uh, like, was better than 85 percent of players today. I'm, I'm gonna say, I would say Penny Hardaway too. Like these guys wasn't just they. They are well. All of them was like Gary Payton or like John Stockton. John, John Stockton. John Stockton. When they get pressed, <laughs> when I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, when they get pressed, they'll turn their back. No, no, no. There's some guys that'll face you up. <laughs> no, again, we got, we got, we got the tractors here. We got the tractors here. Somebody said Michael Jordan has. Let me see. He says, this is the most disgusting thing I've ever heard in basketball. Michael Jordan is by far the greatest offensive player. He has eight 50-point games, 38 yes, 40-point yes. games in the playoffs alone. Uh, who, that's not the way to argue it. Hold on, wait. Who has the most 30 and 10 games in the playoffs, young man? Who has the most 40 and 10 in the playoffs, young man? See, you guys love to just talk about shooting the basketball because that's what Jordan did well, shoot. He shot a lot of shots. He was able to score because of that. But Jordan was not a better offensive player. They had to they actually give... No, matter of fact, they LeBron is an offense, right? They, they've been saying this, LeBron is what? Right? Am I right, Sturdy? Am I right, everyone? LeBron no, is the LeBron, system. LeBron is the system. LeBron, LeBron is, is the system. <laughs> they, 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 that makes him a better offensive player than Jordan off of that because they had, oh, to, give Jordan, they had to give Jordan the system. LeBron is the system. So that means LeBron is your offense. Wait a minute. Sometimes just let them talk, and then talk you into George LeBron being the better offensive player. <laughs> just talk. We're just talking, I'm just talking about skills here, like all that stats. Yes, Jordan is one of the greatest of all time. One of the greatest. Like I'm just talking about skill sets. You actually watch the game, the eye test, and all that uh -huh. other stuff. This is yeah. what I'm talking about. And then they, they respond with, "Oh, he scored most 50 points." It's like, dude, what is, no, we're talking about the skills here. Oh, no, but, no, but, 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 but he relegated it to the playoffs too. He relegated he relegated it to the playoffs. <clears throat> wow. Be but, but, but go okay. ahead. It's more, it's, it's more so. More the thing is, is, is uh -huh. it, it's the thing is, I, I just try to tell people, especially in sports, right? Like there's multiple forms of facts, and. Especially for nuanced conversation like this, in terms of offense, it ain't just skills; it's just your impact on the game. And the only way you can understand that is actually watching the players. That's why most Jordan fans don't actually watch Jordan. Like when I said earlier about that Doug Collins thing, they know what the hell I was talking about. Like no, most Jordan fans can't explain to you where the where the favorite spots on the floor where Jordan like to operate in the triangle. Why the triangle was such a detriment against teams like the, the Pistons and the Knicks. And in particular, for defending Michael Jordan, like and things like that, and like and all even even the intellectual guys like like Travis, like understanding that guys like Jordan needed that type of sophisticated offense to optimize his chance of winning. Mm. That is different. It's different when you compare him to guys like Magic or or LeBron, who under different coaches, under different circumstances, under different teammates, still able to value a high level impact offensively because they're able to control the game offensively in, in ways that Jordan simply wouldn't allow the stuff to do. Jordan's not a facilitator. He's, he's not. He's not a pass first player. He's not a type of guy that's gonna be like, okay, I'm going to draw the I'm going to intentionally be a decoy for for my for my team to get an open shot. No, that was more reactionary than Facts. anticipated. Facts. Facts. But yeah. you're not gonna understand this if you if you're not gonna understand this for most most Jordan fans are not gonna stand it because they don't really understand the game when they even watch Michael Jordan. My God. When I watched that game, it was so it was so slow the first quarter. The first quarter took probably like twenty minutes to end. It was like nonstop with the fouls. With it the was foul endless. call. <laughs> My God. I watched it. I recently no, watched it that. Was, and I was like, God, it, it was a it, it was a different NBA. You know what I'm saying? I recently watched a video <laughs> about dribbling. They were talking about how they started letting players put their hands underneath, <clears throat> underneath the ball a little bit more in the 90s. You know what I'm saying? That's why you was able to get certain things. Players were able to cuff the ball. Um, you know, it, it was just a different NBA. It was great at the time, though, Ishmael. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you this right now. 1998 finals was the most watched finals of all time as far as TV ratings goes. And yeah. 
you know, it, it, it was because of Mike. We we never saw someone like Michael Jordan. And mind you, a lot of stuff that, that like Travis was saying, like Jordan's back to the basket game, it really wasn't that. The triangle offense really revolved around ball movement, a lot of movement. So Jordan understood the offense by 98 very well. So he was able to take his shots, but he was very inefficient. I think he shot 47% that year. And in the playoffs, he shot like 45%. Because Jordan was shooting a lot of outside jumpers. He couldn't get to the rim as, as much. He, he didn't have that first step like he did early in his career. So yeah, all this stuff about Michael Jordan is all myth. He's great. We know he's great because the stats tell us. Not Travis's eye test. Not the shoot shots at you, Travis. But all these guys' eye tests who never watched the game, like Sturdy said, they don't even watch Michael Jordan play. So, But Brandon, we had, we had everybody here uh, basically explain how LeBron's the greatest offensive player, man. I mean, they. He, some, he, I mean, oh, he, he oh, didn't say that. Sturdy, 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 like what you value, like you said before. That's why I've mentioned how Tracy McGrady built this hypothetical play. He did. He built it through an archetype of a wing. That's what some people think they can get their best offense through a guard. Some people think they can get it through a wing. Some people think you get it through a big. Like for like Joker's the best offensive player today, even though he's a center. Well, how the old guys like to say it because apparently you can be a combo. So to me, Joker is no longer a center. He's a combo center. That's that's how old guys taught me. But that's not the point. He's a, the point he's is, a combo, is like a combo center. What are yeah, you hey Johnny, did you? I don't hold like let's say, hey Johnny, what's we the don't, combination? What's the combination? He he because he facilitates the offense like uh -huh. a guard, right? Just like Swimman mentioned, uh -huh. he also does big man things like rebound, like interior scoring. Hence, he's not a regular center, hey Johnny. He's a point the team did not. So yeah, he's a he's a, he's a combo he's a center. center. Okay. Okay. No, I, this is the first time I'm hearing this. I, you know, basketball fans. Yeah. Basketball no. no. Fans. You know. Hey, John. You know, I got this from because I listen to my elders. Right. When I uh -huh. when I talk to guys about the great guys like Jerry West, when I talk to guys like the great guys like Tiny Archibald, you know, what they tell me they say I put them in the same category as James Harden and Steph Curry. Steph Curry, you mean a guy who's just a point guard his entire career? Yes. Like they don't view him as a point guard. They view him as a combo guard. So that's the, I get I understand the concept now. So a guy like Joker who controls the offense, who does multiple things outside of the, the relegated role of a center, he's no longer a center. He's a combo center. He's in his own category, like some of the guards of NBA history. I'm learning. Ismail, I got I gotta go that's... in Ismail for a second. So Ismail, I, I, I understand what you're saying, and like obviously if you like watch you know, a couple games, and like you think you're an expert on Jordan and whatever you think your eye test is like the best. <laughs> so, so you really gotta remember, and it's, again, you can't just say that. But oh, he had no skills, so that's just a ridiculous take. I never so said that. You gotta ignore. You gotta look at. Okay, what was Jordan? What actually set him apart? And like, okay, so everything you mentioned back his back to basket game, you think it was average. His handles, how he played with guys in high school, were better. You gotta remember, Jordan actually was able to get to his spot a great way. He had an above average jumper. He had an above average back to basket game. He was efficient in all those things, which we're not gonna see out of almost any other player to that level aside from Kevin Durant. Was he the best ever at like getting a pull up jumper or did it look the prettiest? No. But you gotta understand, when he's out there, especially during his first seven or eight years, and he's shooting over 50% from the field doing those exact things you're talking about, again, your eye test doesn't matter because he's still gonna give you 30 points per game, doing all those same things you're talking about, finishing great at the rim, using advanced body control to shoot 65, 70% at the rim on only 15 attempts per game within three feet from the basket. Again, he's going to do those things. You're not going to, you'll find better, uh, better players who are more flashy today, but you're not going to find the same efficiency as far as, uh, again, a sustained basis like you did with Jordan. That's what sets him apart from most other players from those positions. Is again, you can look all day and say, I test, I test, I test, and he can pick his least efficient season of all time in 98, again, at least from the field. But again, you're not going to say, okay, going back. I'm actually going to study the game. He was good at these, or he was above average at these consistently. And again, there's a high difficulty of, uh, again, of being efficient is what we're talking about. No other guard in history is going to have these kind of numbers, this type of production, again, other than Michael Jordan, when you're talking about sustained, uh, again, just a sustained basis. Okay. Well, I, I'm not saying Michael Jordan didn't have any skills. I'm saying that, uh, that of course his impact you you don't need to have the flashiest skill sets in order to have 
a great impact. We look at Giannis Antetokounmpo. Obviously, he doesn't have the biggest skill set. He uses his size advantage, his athleticism, to be able to get to the rim and uh, be able to score at, at, at will. So what I'm saying is that just in comparison to what most people talk about, they over-exaggerate Jordan's game and try to devalue uh, LeBron's game and try to make it seem like uh, LeBron's skill level is not above Michael Jordan in some aspects. Just skill level, because in today's game, uh, the smaller players have to be more skilled. They can't just use um, most, the majority of the time, not all the time, but majority of the time, a lot of players have to have use that t uh, form of flashiness to be able to score at will when you look at many of the players today. And so, yes, Jordan, by the numbers, obviously he was very impactful and he didn't need to do all that back then. He needed to do what he needed to do in order to score. And that worked for him. That's wonderful. I would never criticize a player for the fact that they don't have the flashiness because obviously LeBron is not the most flashiest basketball player. And I, I'm not into the whole, oh, the bag talk or true hooper and all that other foolishness and whatever and so i agree with you yeah i agree i agree with you and uh, i'm just saying that in just in comparison to lebron and Le uh, lebron james when, when you guys mentioned handles and stuff i just think that lebron has a better ball handler and more skillful that's it you know what one, one of the things that um we always talk about you know Trav you know, travis just talked about it, how efficient jordan was as a player and that's what sets him apart for, from, you know, a lot of guards because of how efficient Jordan was. Um, I believe Travis is talking about because he shot over 50% most of his career. Is, is is that what you mean by him being more efficient than the uh, other players? It, was, it wasn't most of his career. It was a third of his career. Well, I mean, no, a third of his career was, I mean, he shot 50, he shot at or near 50%, uh, a little over half of his career, if you look at, no, no. We know his last seven years he didn't shoot over fifty percent. Uh when 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 better so players start entering the league, when Michael Jordan just couldn't drive to the hole, he had to shoot like he literally was Kobe Bryant. Jordan shot fifty percent or, or better five seasons in his career. He shot one other season at forty nine point nine. So, so what I talked about seasons. and I actually and if I actually anything. say this is that if you, if, uh -huh. when, he, when he retired as a bull permanently, okay, mm -hmm. he was over 50% from the field. What I'm, I'm not talking about that he's like the most efficient guy in history or anything like that, but I'm talking about when you have that combination, it's, 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 it's a holistic argument. When you have a guy who's a volume shooter, right? And again, this is why it's, it's such a ridiculous argument that Kobe was a better scorer. When you're doing the same things, when you're not just a dunk first, or, or you know, when you're not taking 40% uh, of your shots from zero to three feet. That's when that's when you have to be efficient in order to be a number one guy on a team offensively. That's what Mike was doing. Did he shoot uh, well over fifty percent for like his entire time? No. But when you're talking about his first eleven years, I think that was probably the one of the best scorers just as far as being cerebrally sound. Again, in NBA history, did it that's fall what, off a but, cliff? Sure. So, so um, but, but Travis, what, what, uh -huh. go ahead, Brandon. I'm sorry. What, what makes Marco Jordan a more efficient scorer than Kobe Bryant? Is it because of his first half of his career that he shot over 50%? Like, what, like, yeah, like what makes him a more efficient scorer than Kobe Bryant? Because I think they're about the same, efficiency-wise. Uh, no, they're not about it. Kobe Bryant is 44% or 44 for his career. Michael Jordan, again, is at that, a that, deceptive 49%. But, I mean, arguably, I mean, I, I wish he wouldn't play. I'm sorry. Can I, can I just say this real quick? I'm sorry. I'll just say this real quick. There's a difference between efficiency and accuracy. Bill Goldberg yeah. sentence was accuracy. That's not efficiency. I just I just want to say that. that that's basically yeah. so, yeah. so, so, <laughs> so, so, so basically, when, when we look at both of these players, they play basically almost the same. And early in Jordan's career, he got to the hole easily, made a lot of, you know, dunks and layups um, first half, first part <laughs> of his career. But... Uh, when you when you're going on later in his career, his field goal percentage dips, and dips, and dips, and most likely because of he's shooting over taller players. He's not the the biggest guard in the league anymore. Six five, one hundred ninety was the biggest guard in the league when Jordan came in the league. Like that was a big guard. And when Kobe Bryant is going up against these players who are much bigger than 
Danny Ainge and Craig Elo. Like his field goal percentage is going to dip, just like Michael Jordan field goal percentage dip later in his career when he's going up against these players because he has to work harder. Kobe Bryant had to work harder than Michael Jordan to score points than uh, he did in the first part of his a, career. I just think that's a false narrative because if you look at the average height of point guards and shooting guards, and actually across the board, really mm-hmm. the only uh, the only position that's actually been gotten noticeably larger as far, especially as far as like average body mass index is point guard. I mean, the shooting guards on oh, average oh, up, were like what six five, six six. I mean, you're when? Not gonna, when? It's when? Like Kobe, Travis. And no, when? Not bigger than Kobe Bryant. Either. No, when? No, Travis. Yo, hey Johnny, I'm gonna drop a link for you in the chat to like. To, yeah, to give I you a see, year by year of the I average see. height so, and weights of yeah. players by position. You're not going to see a huge spike in, in that, I guarantee No, no, with, no. With what, 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 Brand, no, what Brandon is saying is that they're, they're eventually, by the time you got to the mid-90s and Jordan's late years and in the early 2000s, they ended up being more athletic and, and, and uh, guards with more stature. Kobe Bryant is 6'6 coming into the league. There were so many guards mm-hmm. coming in that were 6'5 now, 6'6 now, 6'7". That uh, Jordan wasn't the only six six guy. What Brandon is trying to say, and and he was actually giving you props for it, was saying that as a guard, Jordan is actually super efficient. He really is. It, it, it really is. But like Brandon is saying, we can't compare that to players who didn't play in Jordan's era. Because if Kobe was able to play in Jordan's era, he would shoot over fifty, uh, over forty five percent for his career as well. He would get how do, way how do you figure that? Shots. That's just that's just you saying because that. he can't because because the right. shots because because. Because Jordan's 50% shooting season that you're talking about was him able to get to the rim with illegal defense. Kobe Bryant didn't have that opportunity. Oh. By the, See, by this the time, is just conjecture. No, 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 right? no. No, because no, by the time Kobe Bryant was getting his, his ability to score the league at an instituted zone defense, specifically for Shaq. So, he's playing, so, he's playing uh, with Shaq. So he was seeing zone defense since 2001. So, so Travis, are you saying, are, are you yeah. saying if, 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 Michael Jordan was playing in like 2005 and to 2000 and like say 20, he would shoot over 50 percent because. Are you saying that he would he would still be as efficient as he was in, in the 80s? Arguably, because it was arguably harder to get to the rim in the 80s and 90s with those. How was uh, it hard? I mean, players. we all we all watch Michael. <laughs> no we we sat down. We show you these games. Don't do this. We, we showed you oh, the man. games. We showed this you the games. So at this point, we're getting <laughs> oh, away. Wait a minute. We're using Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, let's 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 get to it now. All right. So the average they height. They don't like our eye test. <laughs> yeah, listen. The average height for a shooting guard when Jordan was drafted in 1984 was 6'4". It stayed to about 6'4 till about 1980. Oh, wait. There you go. Wait. 6'4". Hey, we got to 6'5 now. In 1991, by the time Jordan was playing in 1996 and 97, it was 6'5 still. But by the time Kobe was playing in 2007, 2006, it was 6'5, 6'5, 6'5, and it kept going. It always got smaller. It always got. It always got. And now it's starting to get smaller as the 2000s come along. Players are getting smaller as shooting guards. So the average shooting guard in general. For NBA history, is like six four, uh, uh, a track, mm-hmm. which which Jordan yes. is well larger than. Okay, so it's Kobe. Yeah, but, but, but yeah, Kobe but is. no, no, but his, now, I think uh, his 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 inaccuracies, right? So what B Leaser is, is is trying to explain, Travis, is that this is a fact that the era that Kobe, especially majority of his prime, was in. The defense wasn't tied down by legal defense. You could implement zone principles, exactly. so that made it that that congested the lane and does made it harder for guys, permanent, especially permanent players and bigs, during the era of Kobe's prime. Especially for a one-on-one player like Jordan in isolation, we all know with the combination of triangle offense, he took way more advantages of the legal defense era. Simply put, when Kobe Bryant, when, when Jordan in the nineties, he's he's being guarded by a player on the wing. Once he beat that player, all he had to do was deal with the big. Kobe Bryant, on the other hand, due to implementation of zone principles, he's not only dealing with his guy that he's guarding, but also dealing with guys coming out in the in the in the nails and also the big that's at the baseline. So it's hit, so essentially, once Kobe Bryant beats his one his guy, he's facing two players versus George is facing one. Now that's his that's his that's the baseball basketball rules and understanding of the errors. I will say this, Travis, though. 
what made what made Jordan what made Jordan more efficient was the combination of the fact that he was more an athletic player. Regardless of the area you put them in, Jordan is a bigger, more athletic player, so he's able to get more separation on not only his lift from going to the rim, but also on his jump shots as well. It ain't the other stuff you're talking about. But Sterling, I mean, agree, Sterling, agree because even, even real quick, even back then in the '90s, we have specific instances when we saw when Jordan had to play against people, his height, his body, his body size, he struggled with them. Penny used to give him the business. Grant Hills used to Grant Hill used to give him fits. Like we 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 can't sit here and act like. We don't have instances where, where Jordan struggled against certain type of players because they were yeah, in Jordan, height. They Jordan, Jordan was a, yeah, Jordan was susceptible to other quick primitive player scores. Like, that is a fact. That's why when you watch the film, it shows that. That's when Travis tells me that Jordan was the better defensive player. I looked at the film and I laughed my ass off. But that's just another conversation but, different day. Know, but you know, another thing is that Kobe's not inefficient. To be honest with you, Kobe's actually he's not, inefficient. He's not for, inefficient. For God. But this is another thing we got to remember as, as well. When Kobe entered the NBA, the, the league was still a big man's league, right? So Kobe's space and stuff like that was a little bit different because of Shaq and everything like that. But again, another thing Kobe didn't get, because see, like when Jordan had the ball and they realized it was a mismatch, they would just clear the whole side out. Jordan would have that one-on-one. -on -one. In today's NBA, the last 10 exactly. years, right? The, the, in the last 10 years, they would do, I don't know if you guys watched LeBron James talk about uh, the basketball on Mind the Game, but he talked about how uh, they would do a lot of switching. And that's how they were able to beat the Clippers because Ty, Tyron Lue likes to do this thing where he, he makes the team switch. Like how they made Stephon Curry switch on the Kyrie Irving. And he and uh, uh, J.J. Redick mentioned how LeBron would do the same. Where LeBron would call for a screen knowing they have to switch. Now LeBron gets that one-on-one -on -one with J.J. Redick. Kobe never had that opportunity because th that didn't exist in Kobe's era. They didn't do the type of switching like they do today in Kobe's era. It was still a big man's game. So Kobe had to find his shots a lot more difficult than LeBron did and, and uh, Michael Jordan did. Because he never really had those. He didn't have that space. Jordan had space, LeBron had space. So that was, I think that was the difference. But again, Kobe was never good at getting at the rim as good as Michael and Jordan was. I mean, as good as Michael and LeBron was. That's, I think that's the thing that holds Kobe back. I Kobe also feel like LeBron. Now I'm saying not as I good as them. I said not as good as Mike and, and LeBron. That's what I'm saying. Getting to the rim is good as those two. Yeah, Kobe, Kobe, Kobe like just didn't have the athletic I, advantage at those guys. That's all. He just had, 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 had the athletic advantage. I don't. Kobe was uh, definitely got to no, the no. I'm saying, I'm saying, no. I'm saying, like, in contrast, I'm saying in contrast to Jordan. And LeBron, I didn't say like, he didn't have it, Brandon. I said he just wasn't as good as LeBron and Michael at it. Well, he's Only definitely he not good. not as great as LeBron. But yeah. if we're just talking about getting to the rim, if you take Michael Jordan in the '90s compared to what um, Kobe Bryant did, it's basically the same. No, my Michael thing is no. Jordan, in the '80s, is different because the, yeah. the 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 defense was lacking in the '80s. They couldn't guard Michael Jordan, but as no. As but Michael Jordan got, got to the '90s, he wasn't getting to the rim with ease. Like I mean, like no, I know that. No, I know that. But that's but that's what I'm saying. But with, with Kobe, right? The fact that Kobe never had a chance to have the kind of space Jordan and LeBron had, his shots were a lot more contested. Because even Kobe shooting 42 percent from mid range for his career, that's great for a 20 year span to shoot at 42 percent from mid range. That's actually great with the type of defenses he had to face. So again, Kobe is still a great scorer. But like you said, Brandon, you know, Jordan was just efficient as well. But, you know, it's, it's, it's really understanding the game. And that's what we're doing. We're talking the game right now. We're actually talking basketball and how these guys were able to score and be efficient as well and still be productive because we all know they're great scorers, all three of them. Let me, let me, let me actually pose, let me pose this right here. Have, did y'all see the last episode of uh, LeBron and JJ's uh, podcast? Of course. I feel, LeBron, like he destroyed, I feel like he destroyed the entire bag argument. Because I feel like that it, it's always been a flawed argument. Because when they, when they for, for example, they'll get on LeBron because they'll be like, okay, you switched on to Steph Curry. Why didn't you sit here and just, you know, take him to the rim or run to the, or, or just, you know, basically take that shot. And he sat there and he broke it down. He says, I under, they, he said, the defense understands Steph Curry's on me. So if he plays to his strong suit and try to get to the rim, everybody's going to collapse on him. Could he sit here and force that shot up? Of course, but he's trying to sit here and get people to realize it's bigger than him just forcing up a shot or forcing his way or, or taking a, an unnecessary shot when you have your players around you. He'd rather get his players involved and get them in rhythm 
So that way they'll be able to be more effective in the game than force a shot. That's another reason why he's a better. That goes to his IQ, and that goes to the uns- that goes into the understanding of the team concept of basketball. Could he sit here and take every shot and probably still be efficient? Absolutely. But he understands if his teammates aren't in rhythm and his teammates aren't aren't ready to shoot, and they've gotten no no basically no no run all game. How does that help him? That's the concept of winning that I think we leave out when these conversations. You can't win by yourself. That's why Jordan wasn't successful in the 80s. He was sitting here pulling all these shots, going on a run. Yeah, he averaged Yeah, he averaged 37. Yeah, he averaged 36. Good for him. How far did he get in the playoffs? You, you see what I'm team, saying? When, when a team played defense on him. When a team stepped up. Like like uh, Political Rex said here, Jordan struggled at times against 6'8", Alex English. He also struggled against, I think, what was it, Len Bias or the other guy? Reggie Lewis, Lewis, I think he said. Reggie, Reggie, Lewis. Reggie Lewis as well. And uh, Sniper Nation 357 has been in the comments all day. He actually said the best comment of the day for him. He said, you can tell a wise man surrounded by fools, Travis is quiet. <laughs> <laughs> So, Travis, you are doing your job as an MJ delegate. You got the LeBron haters feeling very great about you, saying that we're fools. Although he was up here talking about Michael Jordan's sneakers are better to be worn in public. But what are better sneakers to be wearing while you're playing basketball? LeBron's, Kobe's, or Michael Jordan's? If we let Politicus Rex tell us, Koozie's, PF, uh, what is it, the PF Flyers are better basketball shoes than Jordan shoes. (laughs) (laughs) What? The, be- the, the better basketball shoe is actually Kobe Bryant. Um, LeBron yeah, is more of a, mm-hmm. I always say LeBron is more of a big man shoe. Um, Jordan's shoe is very stiff to play in. Um, when I was on the basketball team, uh, we tried out Jordan. It was the worst shoe to play in. Uh, we actually got to practice in the shoe. We went with Adidas instead of uh, Nike. But, um, Jordan shoe was terrible to play in, and then even once they got loose, they got too loose. So, well, Jordan shoes are not really made to play basketball. They had to basically custom made his shoes so he could play in them. So, you, and uh, just so you remember, but why, but why would you make them? But, I, but the question is, why would you make Jordan shoes durable and basketball worthy when people are going to spend three hundred dollars on them anyways? You might you, you got to make them out of cheap material. People going to spend the money anyways. Why would you make any expensive shoe or any lavish shoe for anybody who's just going to wear them anyways? They only, like I said, they only wear them in public. They're not hoopers. They don't wear Jordans and they don't play basketball. They're just a bunch of idiots on on uh, on YouTube and they're not subscribed to the channel, which is what they should do. Just hit the subscribe channel because you see Brandon and I, we give y'all shit that y'all want to hear. Y'all want to hear how much Jordan isn't great. We keep telling y'all this. Politicus Rex, I don't know what we said that you didn't say. About Bob Cousy PF chain shoes. The, I, he did say something about the PF. He did say them. He said, he said I, I would rather have the Cousy PF. I saw it in the comments. I was going to say something earlier. But if I said, if I misspoke, I'm sorry. Didn't mean this to speak your words. You can speak for yourself. But thanks again for joining us. You guys are hitting the comments up. We see all of you guys here. We see Willie. The Jordan fans are taking an abuse in the comments, man. Y'all, y'all have really been hurting this last month. 2024 <laughs> is not good for y'all, man. Um, 20, 2024 is a bad year for Jordan fans, man. Go we ahead, done Jordan. with the 90s has really hurt <laughs> Jordan fans. Because people are actually going back, really looking at the games. I mean, people are actually going to look at the film. Like Ace 30 said, go look at the film and tell me how you really think. And that's what's starting to come back. Uh, that, listen, they don't, they don't get it. And listen, it's, it's, it's Jordan's left hand. Now it's Pete Diddy. A lot of shit going to fall in the 90s. A lot of shit's going to fall in the 90s. <laughs> the, the 90s era is going to show itself. Let, if we let Sturdy tell it, John Stockton as well. John Stockton as well. Everything falls in the nineties. <laughs> so, yes, so, hey, so, so, are we, are we, are we convinced now that LeBron is the is the greatest offensive player of all time? And we, have we convinced? No, I mean, no, 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 no. Travis, no, why, why are you better offensive player than Jordan? He's yeah, LeBron, LeBron James Jordan. clearly the greatest offensive player of all time. It's not even a question. I don't even know what to say about it. Be I just, I just say, it's just. It just depends, like I said, it depends on what you value and how you want to build your offense around it. Some people value. Sturdy, what do you value then? 
Yeah, yeah, I, I want to hear it because I, I I wasn't here to hear Sturdy um, take. Yeah, because Sturdy, because Sturdy, they said that you are an articulate capper in the comments. So go ahead and articulate your, your capping. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's that's the thing. When you when you give some like a lot of people don't understand algebra, don't mean it's not factual. You know what I'm saying? But like I get it. But in regards to <laughs> no, in, in terms of like my preference, I I prefer I prefer a um a dominant score and playmaking big. That's just my mm -hmm. preference because in my opinion. You, there's no more. There's no efficient shot in any era than the paint shot, there's, and also you don't draw no more fouls than the post attacking the paint. So having a dominant scoring big who's able to play make, you're able to get more grab. You're able to get more attention from the defense and get more open shots. The, the shot archetype throughout NBA history, even today, is either the drive or the post up shot. So if you're able to dominate that area of the floor, you're gonna have more respect for the. You're gonna have more attention from the defense, and the defense gonna shift towards you. That's why my preference is the scoring playmaking um big than opposed to the 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 one from guard. That's just my preference. So how is it not LeBron James 30? <laughs> but yeah, what you yeah, just said. Yeah. No, now, like, I just, I just want to know so, who who is the greatest man, offensive player of all time. Just that's, yeah, that's just why I say it depends on what you value. So you I, mm -hmm. at this point you might you can say you can say Braun, you can say magic. Honestly, Joker is putting himself in that conversation. Because in my opinion, all three of those guys control the pace of the game. They are elite playmakers, and they're proven to score when they need to. To keep it simplistic. Okay, if to you me, those, make a case for those one three guys. player, make make a case for one player. Technically, LeBron no, I, would be. Yeah, I mean, he, he played a big in Miami, and he was also an elite playmaker and also a scorer when he needed to be. So no, he, yeah, he played. Forward. Yeah, he played power forward. He played power forward, man. I mean, he played fifty percent of the season. That one sees that center at the Lakers. So yeah, I get it. But um it's, yeah, it's like I said, I, right now, if I, if I say all time, if I say all time right now, I'll say LeBron, mm -hmm. but when, when it's all said and done, it's probably gonna end up being Joker. Yeah, it, it, it could be, it could be. Yeah, it could be you know, when all said and done. I but I guess we gotta see how his career plays yeah. out. I mean and also at a, add, as a, also had an added bonus. I don't care what anybody says, but him to be able to have that level of impact on the four different head coaches. Three different locations and other three and then four different offensive systems because basketball isn't just a one on one roll it out type of game. Yes, teams run sets and actions. The fact that he's able to perform at those different levels is the reason why I give LeBron the edge over Magic all time because that level of flexibility is 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 unquantifiable. Simple. Yeah, you know, I I'll always you know a lot of people uh, disagree. A giant disagree. I always said it was tougher for what LeBron did when he won, you know, titles with three different teams compared to Jordan o Oante, you know, I'm in the um the, the minority on that. So my thing is huh? if oh, you're playing I said that, Brandon. Yes, 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 you did. Yes, you did. You, when you said, I said it. that. When, when when whenever we, we were talking about the like the, the greatest accomplishments, I said LeBron James three finals MVPs on three different teams was was tougher than what Jordan um six titles it, Absolutely. Um, yeah. So my my thing is, if you're if you're taking your like group of guys, which is the best group group of guys, and you beating someone uh, six times in a row, that's harder than you taking someone. You put them on a team that's 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 not great, and he builds his team up, and you win. You put them on a different team that's not great. Like each team LeBron went to, they were not that great of a team. I, I know the Heat were a little bit better. They were making the first round at least. Uh, they made the first. The playoffs, I think, what, two out of the last four times, um, but they lost in the first round the last four years before you got there. The Cavs, four years in a row, were a lottery team. The Lakers, four years in a row, was a lottery team. Even though LeBron built his team up because people want wants to play with LeBron James, I still think that's harder as a player to actually do what LeBron James did. Brandon, a lot more people agree with you than you think because I agree with you that I think LeBron's path was harder with all these different head coaches and it's that's inconsistency right there because you're dealing with other people's plan. Now, how are we going to approach the game? But Jordan, they, he knew in training camp what they was going to come with. We was going to play the triangle offense, and this is how we was going to play defense. He knew consistently since Phil got there what they was going to do. When he came back, he knew the offense. He knew the defense. So, trust me, Brandon. I think a lot more people is on that side of your your argument than than you think. I was on that side. I think he he's talking about the greatest accomplishment because I think I remember what you're talking yeah. about. That's when we were comparing yeah. accomplishments. Yeah, because I'll basically let's go. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Like you said six finals MVP versus making three on three different teams, which was a greater accomplishment. 
And I was saying that the six is hard to get. Like, I don't think no one's ever going to really get six finals MVPs ever again. I believe, so yeah, as, I believe that's the only Jordan record that's not going to As far as greatest accomplishment, what's, what's tougher, that's different. Yeah, LeBron James <laughs> doing on, winning on three different teams is obviously tougher. We've always praised it that way. That's yeah, that's just, but but hey, Johnny, is that that's just like in, in life? It's like when you migrate, when you move, there's mm-hmm. always an adjustment period. Yeah. Period. Yeah. It's like there's a reason why the Bulls won all six of their titles with the same head coach and the same two best players. There's an the understanding foundation. Like I understand, no matter what the pieces are, I understand these level of expectations. When you move, there's different adjustment period for the expectations, and you adjusting yourself constantly. Like this dude literally won a championship as a small forward, as a point guard, as a power forward. Like what? What do you? It's <laughs> <many> different systems. <laughs> like what? It, what do people want to do? I mean, that is it's crazy. Like, you even say that. You really <laughs> so saying it's, not, it's not just the system. It's not just the system and the head coach. They put better. Like Horace Grant left. They replaced him with Dennis Rodman. You see what I'm saying? So yes, he didn't score, mm-hmm. but you got the best rebounder in the league to play. With the two best, with the two best wings in the game, like come on, like let's not pretend. Like you said, he has the system, he has the mm-hmm. head coach, but anytime a piece left, they got a better piece. So you're God. someone's gonna leave, and you're gonna get Ron Harper. Someone's gonna leave, and you're gonna get Steve Kerr. Someone's gonna leave, and you're gonna get B.J. Armstrong. Like people don't realize. Like I think Steve Kerr shot fifty percent from three. Same as um Paxton. With Steve Kerr to Same all, as BJ Armstrong. Fifty. Yes, not for, something not crazy for like not, that. Not for the career. Nah, I'm talking about for what for, for that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Tra- Travis, what what context need to be added for uh when LeBron James, you know, three Finals MVPs on three different teams? So I mean, you, it, was it a great accomplishment to I mean move? I think the people like. A lot of people take that away from him as far as like team jumping. But I don't really care. It's what you do on the court. Was it a great accomplishment to eventually win? Yeah, but you can't. I think the narrative that like it's, it's a lot of like people overrate George's career as well in some aspects. Sure, but with LeBron, I think one of the one of the big overrate is like, oh, he did this on three different teams. Sure, but when he went to, uh, they act like he just went to the Heat team and that's it, and like then they were rebuilding and blah blah. blah. Sure, but they actually made several key uh, acquisitions before they won that first title in 2012. Like, you had a bunch of players coming in uh, that actually sustained that. Like, you know, obviously, Ray, uh, you know, Ray Allen, Shane Batty was there. Uh, Bosch was there. Eddie House. Okay. All these contributors that actually made them a great team. They had an almost an entirely new and different core. Same thing when you went to uh, L.A. They traded to who, like, a Ball, Ingram, and Hart, and, like, some other role players, like, almost half their – young squad or young cores that was being referred to actually get AD because they didn't, he didn't even sniff the playoffs in 2019 when he actually first got there. Was there injury? Sure. But, I mean, they were uh, they didn't have that same success as, until AD got were there. Were they in the playoff so, in 18? Huh? Were they in the playoff in 18? No. Were they in the playoff in 2017? But, but I mean, he's on the Cavs. When were the, the Lakers? Oh, about the Lakers. Before, oh, Lakers. Yeah, when did the Lakers make the playoffs before LeBron? It was 2013. Like 2013. I think it was 13. When did the Cavaliers uh, like, make the playoffs before LeBron? 1998. <laughs> the second. I mean, I, I, I'm being honest. I'm talking about the second stint. The second stint, they missed all four times. The, the Lakers missed six times in a row. So what are you yeah. talking about, Travis? So like about... Jordan, Jordan, Jordan no, he... again. Jordan Hold again on. had had players like he had a a, a, a sure. Mind you, but again, what? it's not just it's not. But my point is, it's not just. Adding LeBron and you're a title contender. There's a lot of rebuilding yes, each and every was. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're right. You're right. Teams, teams win, Travis. But that's why I yeah. didn't. I was. I wasn't emphasizing on the result of it. I was more so giving you the like his path of victory for them to get that success. He had to change positions. He had to adjust his play style. He had to add more skill to his game. And so his versatility only gives more credence to the fact that he's able to do it with this with the second best player. Being a two-way slashing guard and Wade, then to do it again with a scoring point guard and Kyrie, then do it again with a two-way dominant power forward like AD. I'm not saying, of course, teams win championship, teams make the playoffs, but the fact that he had to make that adjustment, given the pieces that we just mentioned, that's more a testament to his portability and versatility. 
Uh, I mean, I don't think he really changed his game up uh, from 08 to to 2011. Like, what he that's what we do. that's what we completely agree to disagree. Wait, a I minute. mean, okay, he definitely played. changed his game up when he went to Miami. I mean, he took less shots. I mean, oh, the first year, ball. definitely the first year he did off ball. I called? mean, and then the Lakers championship, he played point guard. I, he I don't... played point guard. That was impressive. But like I said, AD was arguably the best player on both ends. Uh, he was really? more efficient. He let him in blocks, steals, or blocks. Uh, rebounds, yeah, most of the regular season, but when it came to the play, yeah, yeah, for, for the regular yeah, but, season, yeah. But the sure. only thing Jordan changed was his trust in his teammates and his coach. That's not he, he, he didn't have to do nothing else. So, so he didn't system. have to change his game in any kind of way. All he had to do was trust his teammates more, right? So I, I don't I, listen. The, the the idea that LeBron James had to, you know go to three different teams to win championships. Again, if the NBA was like the 90s, you don't have the Boston Celtics of 2008. LeBron never has to leave Cleveland. He's winning a championship from there. You don't get Paul Gasol in L.A. With all these these, these type of moves that help teams win championships during LeBron's era wouldn't have been there as well. So LeBron would have won championships. So, like, all this idea that LeBron needed to switch teams to win championships is nonsense. He needed to switch teams because... Cleveland was not trying to win NBA championships. Sure exactly. They wanted yeah, man, the best. No, they were, I'm, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, John, I'm not going to say that. They they tried, but they wasn't they wasn't How? competent enough. How no, no, I, I give you saying. I know, I know. Hold on. No, there's a difference. There's a difference. You can try. You can try, you're just not good enough. That's that's there's a difference. There's a well, difference between effort was, and execution. I don't see how they tried. No, they they no did. Execution. They did. No, they did. They did get it in terms of hiring Mike in terms of hiring Mike Brown, in terms of get, um Getting that defense and underratedly getting some shooters around LeBron, they did. They, they did try, John. I get it. They did fumbled up with the no, Mark Stoudemire. They no. did fumbled up with the JJ Hickson. I get it. No, but I, no I'm, I'm it, asking this because you know, you know, you know, I'm the exposer. I'm gonna ask you this because I have no one answer this. Why didn't Cleveland have the cap space in 2010 to sign Bosh, Wade, and LeBron? No, I just told you, I, Adrian, I just told you. It's different between trying and executing. They wasn't competent enough. They wasn't smart enough to actually get the job done. See, that's the thing. When, when Travis, for some reason, it's not an insult to Jordan to give precise accountability towards to a top five GM like Jerry Krause. It's not an insult to Jordan right. when we mention the fact that he had a top five coach in Phil Jackson and one, a top five assistant coach in Tex Winners. That's more so getting credit because when Jordan orchestrates a BS documentary like The Last Dance, making it mostly around him and not giving credit to the pieces that made that team successful, you get that type of level of reaction. That's why that's why I emphasize in saying it's not some don't 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 pay attention on the result. Because every team, you need a great team to win a championship. But look at what the players are doing to get that result. Yeah, I, I think LeBron James value to uh his impact, he, I think, in my opinion, in my uh, subjective opinion, that LeBron James is the, has the greatest impact as a player to win championships because his versatility is unmatched to be able to play nice. with different strands of skills and as a player. It, like He is definitely the ring giver. And, yes, uh, they have to make moves in order to have him play uh, around great role players and great – and great other great stars obviously that's that's how the name of the game is for the championship in the 90s you had one or two stars and that was it you can win a championship from that with other role players today is a different game today is a different era but it has its value because when you look at other players um other stars that are surrounded by that like you look at kevin durant they have the third highest payroll for the phoenix suns and they're only like in the seventh seed you look at Kevin Durant with the uh, Brooklyn Nets. You look at Kyrie Irving playing with other stars. You look, uh, you look at all these players that have played with different stars, and they just cannot be able to do the same thing. LeBron, even when LeBron James in 2018, to me, he played in a. Uh, uh, at that time, it was you know they say it's a weak East, but he played against uh, great competition against the Atlanta Hawks. The, uh, they weren't even the number one seed. He still. Uh, dragged the team to the NBA Finals in 2018 without other yeah, stars. Yeah, I think they were the number four seed that year. Yeah, they, I, I but, think they were number but, three. But that, and, but and, that goes and the to... Toronto Raptors was number yeah. one. So it just 
You yeah, they, they had to be the four seed then because they faced Toronto in the second round. No, no okay. but, that, but that goes to what I was saying about teams trying to win because, as, as 30 was saying, for some reason, the Cavaliers were competent in 2015, 2016, 17, and 18. They made all the right moves then to help them be a championship contender. Well, you know why, Johnny? Because LeBron no, yeah, was because... in a position to leverage his contract. Remember, LeBron... Yeah. We'll no, do a two-plus one. No, 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 because LeBron told Dan Gilbert in that flight, you are going to build a championship roster. You're going to trade Wiggins because you're not going to hold on to Wiggins. The, the, the Cavaliers prior to that would have held on to Wiggins and yes, told LeBron, they, they, that's right. the difference. That's that's the difference. The they difference really is drafted that, Anthony Bennett. They really drafted Anthony Bennett, number one. Exactly. Right. So it was. It had nothing to do with them being more competent. It's just that now they were the, – Gilbert, the, there's owners out here who are satisfied making their money. You're going to yeah. fill up the seats with LeBron James as a superstar. The NBA, that's why they promote their stars because those are the guys who fill up the seats. And I'm okay. going to make my money no matter what. So that's what Cleveland was doing with LeBron. That's why they didn't try to make no moves. That's why they didn't care about the 2010 offseason. They didn't care about J.J. Hickson. They didn't care. All they cared about was LeBron was there and he was not supposed to leave. That's why he got mad when LeBron left. He wrote that big mean letter because in his mind, you're not supposed to leave. You're supposed to stay right. here and deal with this no matter what while other teams are getting better, while GMs are out yep. here conniving and doing things to keep the Cavaliers from winning. When you know Danny Ainge said he was going to draft LeBron as a junior in high school, the number one pick overall, he would have did it. Why do you think he went and got Paul? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen? He saw 2007. He saw what was yeah. uh, uh, the writing on the wall. That he knew what reaction. was about to happen. That was yeah. the reaction to that year. He why, and what, that was and, what, and, what, and, and why do you think the Lakers went and got Paul Gasol that same year too? Because they said, well, damn, if Boston's doing this, our rival, we got to do something. And Jerry West said, I give you a gift. That's why it should be investigated for y'all asking in the comments. Yeah. Jerry West was a part of the Memphis Grizzlies uh, executive no, uh, uh, camp. A lot of people don't recognize and, that. But no, it, it was the same thing in Minnesota because Ke uh, 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 Kevin McHale was the GM yeah. In, in, yeah. In, in Minnesota. That's how they were able to send him to Boston. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, people I mean, don't like, hey, you know Johnny, you are 100% yeah. correct. They wanted LeBron James to be Kevin Garnett with the Timberwolves. Be content getting to the playoffs, filling up the stadium, making the money for the team and the Damian owner. Damian Lillard. And Damian not Lillard. Going at Damian Lillard. Another mm -hmm. one. Get in, mm -hmm. get in Portland, have the exciting series, make it look all good, but you know they're not going to get over the hump. Like you said, in 2007, though, LeBron shook that he had a tectonic shift, and those teams had to load up to beat just him in Cleveland with no other superstar. Like, and people was, don't realize. Uh -huh. And it was happening in 2010. Imagine LeBron sitting there knowing Bosh and Wade are going to go to Miami. Knowing all these other teams are racking up players and getting players added to their team. Shaq went over there to Boston. Rashard, uh, Rashard, uh, uh, Rashid Wallace and all these other guys are all going to all these other teams. No one is coming to Cleveland. Amari Stoudemire going to New York. St uh, 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 right. Carmelo goes to New York the year before that. All, all this other stuff. Is LeBron supposed to stay in Cleveland? He says, no. and, and mind LeBron. you, he doesn't. He doesn't have the MJ card to where he can quit the game of basketball because he's tired and exhausted and needs a break and come back and maybe try it again. So he has to figure out something. That's he, wild, man. Yeah, he, 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 he yeah. basically got a paid vacation and got to play another sport. That's it. <laughs> That's all, I crazy. Know is, all I know is my guy won a championship for every professional team he played for, while the other guy didn't. <laughs> That's facts. Right. That's yeah, crazy. I mean, like, imagine LeBron quitting and going to go play tennis while still getting paid from his contract. Man, people will go you nuts. Know, a lot of people don't, and you know what's crazy? Because a lot of people don't know that, that Jordan was still getting paid by the Bulls when he had retired. <laughs> a lot of people do not know that. Because oh, he wasn't retired. He, he Technically, he was suspended. He wasn't. Right. Yeah. But, all that's but, true, Johnny, but it's like, mm -hmm. you, you also got to say, yeah, were, was was Cleveland like the, if, or was like Cleveland like the best destination for, uh, again, attractive free agents, uh, again, like the bet, you know, think people wanted to go there to win? No, but you also got to, uh, I think that a lot of hate that Cleveland gets, and especially those teams, because those teams were great, like from 07 to uh, 2010, they had uh, anywhere between uh, a top 10 to top 5 defensive or defense 
uh, especially compared to league average there. Like in 2010, they had the sixth best defense for those Celtics that year. Yeah, uh, and, and, and three point shooting. Also, yeah, and also his supporting yeah. cast that year was just as good, especially mm-hmm. if, if you look at points per game. Now, also Cleveland had the best record in the league in 09 and 10. The reason they lost to the Celtics was because, again, they got clamped in games uh, four, five, and six. LeBron actually shot 33% again. Uh, from, Travis, again, from the field in those stop, games melted Travis, down. stop so, it, Travis. You, you've been shooting some shots. What did Rondo do in Boston 2010? <laughs> hey, just go by the numbers. Mm-hmm. The numbers, okay. LeBron tell me what. Tell me Rondo's numbers in 2010 versus the Cleveland Cavaliers during that playoffs. Did he average a triple-double? Well, close he, damn, he damn near did. He, he, he was killing them because they had Mo Williams on him. LeBron right. can't stop. LeBron can't. LeBron can't guard Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, and Ray Allen and Rondo. Right. So, they, they, what does they, it have to do with him? What does it have? Because to do it with doesn't. Him, ma- it doesn't matter what LeBron down. does when when the other team is just a better team. You're talking about LeBron James being able to make those mediocre players still be good, but when the playoffs show up, all of their weaknesses are going to be exposed, and that's what you saw every playoff with the Cleveland Cavaliers. So LeBron because you can it. you can run throughout the season when a team is not really game planning. Y'all see, that's why y'all don't watch basketball. Teams have so. scouting reports, right? They watch film. But mm-hmm. if I played Minnesota tonight, and then two nights from now I'm playing San Antonio, how much game planning do I have? And then if there's another game, there's not really much game planning throughout the season. You work on certain things. You work on certain sets. You get yourself ready. You build chemistry. You do a lot of things. But when you get to the playoffs, all that changes. I know who I'm facing for the next four games. And, and hey, hey, John, that's how the are Absolutely. Oh, yeah, go, go ahead. Same, go ahead. But, 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 okay, T-Perk, because this is relevant what you're saying, right? So it's not just – so Jordan shot 17% from field goal percentage again in game three against the Knicks in 93. But the Bulls still end up winning. He shot, he shot 26%. And the finals against Seattle, game six, they still end up winning. She shot 30, 30% from field goal percentage again in game four in 96 against the Knicks. The Bulls end up winning. Not only, and these are not only that series, but they end up winning those games. So we can understand, Travis, there's, no, there's never one reason why a team loses a game or a series. Sure. There's never just one reason. There's multiple reasons. So... I explained to you, even with Jordan shooting horrendously from the field and acting from the field, his team was still able to win because they had a better team. That's why I'm not. That's why we kind of cut you off when you were trying to allude why the Cavaliers, even though they were a good team, they weren't a better team than a Boston Celtics, and that's how that works, Travis. Tra- All right, so let's do this, Travis, because this is why this is why I tell you guys stats matter and talking the game matters. Look, the the Cavaliers go up two one in the Eastern Conference uh, 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 series against Boston, uh, 2010. Mm-hmm. And in game four, Ray- Rajon Rondo goes off for 29 points, 18 rebounds, and 13 assists, playing 47 minutes in the game. LeBron James himself goes off for uh, 22 points. He has eight assists and nine rebounds that game. Now he did shoot 39% from the field. He shot seven of 18. Like that, and he was over five from the three-point land. But nobody else on his team could step up and stop Rondo. The same guy, Mo Williams, that you guys want to talk about, gave him nine points. He shot 33%. The Cavaliers as a team shot 40% in total. So it's not just LeBron James. There are nobody, there are no other scorers on this team. They're only good because LeBron makes them a part of the offense. When Jordan was jacking up shots in 88, 89, and 90 and losing series, you guys don't mention that. You don't mention game three, four, and five in, 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 in 1988 and game four, five, and six in, in 1989 when Jordan was jacking up shots and missing and coughing up his team's games and teams getting blown out in a game seven because Jordan didn't know how to make his teammates better. How is LeBron supposed to beat the, this team when Rondo's putting up a triple-double of 29, 18, and 13? That's their fourth best player. Yeah, and that's one guy. He was the best player. So you're looking at this. Okay, yeah, LeBron uh-huh. LeBron shot 39% from the field, okay? And games one, two, and three, you talk about scouting reports. 
they they knew about the teams in 2008 and they knew about them vice and vice versa it wasn't like there was some new team coming in they play each other four times a year was there a scattering report absolutely lebron's entire starting lineup had double figures almost an entire series on better shooting splits you look at uh old shack 17 points that game that same game 13 for Molin, uh anton jameson anthony parker uh -huh. on way less shots lebron again took the most shots shot the worst he melted uh -huh. down games four, five, and six. You're telling me that if he would perform better, like he did in you know, games one, two, and three, where he was averaging 27, eight, and nine on Sh almost 50 percent shooting, they would have won, or they wouldn't Shaq, have won. Shaq, no, Shaq doesn't even play the fourth quarter in game four. Shaq plays 27 minutes that game because okay. Shaq can't give you 35 minutes. Sha that's not the Shaq. So Shaq gave you 17 minutes, right? Yeah. And they, and guess what? They get blown out in the fourth quarter. That's yeah, that's exactly. where they lose the that's where they lose the game at because LeBron James is on the floor with Anthony Parker. Who is Anthony Parker? Can you tell me who that is? Candace Parker. Uh, he, he was the guy out shooting LeBron for Mo, that series. Mo, <laughs> Mo Williams. Mo Williams. Antoine Jameson and Andy, <laughs> Anderson Varejao. That's who he's on the court with in the fourth quarter yes. to win a game. These are the names. These are the in names Boston's. that also gave you double figures and helped you to the best record in the league. Two years in a row. Because Travis, Travis, name. Travis, Travis. Let's, no, let's put all thing. Travis, let's put all thing against. That's okay. Everyone knows. No, no. Everyone knows the difference between regular season play and playoffs. Playoffs, there is no back to backs. Playoffs, there is no scheduling favor. It's literally you're playing one team for essentially a week, who are strictly game planning to stop not only you as an individual because you keep focusing on individual. That's a good point. But your team. Exactly. That's why. That's why I keep giving you concepts like when Jordan shoots thirty-eight point seven percent field goal percentage against Miami, but the Bulls still end up winning the series in five games. That means teams win the series. There's no one. There is no single. There is no. There's never. I don't care what play. I don't care what era. I don't care in a team sport like, especially in the NBA. There's never a single reason why a team loses or win. So when you ask the question, oh, in this hypothetical world, if LeBron shot maybe a little more accurate from the field, I would come up to the notion is they would still lose because in the team win series, team, especially good. in the playoffs. No, that, Travis, what you're missing, you have a better record, if you have a better record than a team, don't mean you're a better team in the playoffs. The Bulls didn't always have the best record in the league, Travis, when they won the six championships. They did it, but it was always the best team at the playoffs. Okay, so, so you can even reverse this. Hold on, you can even, hold no, on real quick, Travis. Hold on real quick. Uh, no, you can no, even reverse go. this logic. You remember uh -huh. in the 80s, Jordan Jordan was putting up monster numbers in the playoffs. Wasn't he getting swept in the first round? <laughs> but not only that, no, no, not only that, Let's bring up 1988, because this, this is why I love it, because they love to bring up LeBron's issues when he's facing dominant teams and teams that are focusing on him dominant only teams. and he doesn't have help. Boston was a dominant team. Doesn't have they help? Made, he has he help. Have, no, let's talk about Jordan's help. That's what you're saying, because you said Anthony Parker was help, right? Because Anthony Parker shot 50% for that series, averaging eight points per game, right? But Michael mm -hmm. Jordan plays in the series, on six, right? On, on wait, a... wait, 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 wait. Michael Jordan goes into a series against Detroit, and he has a player who shoot 60% from the field, averaging 11 and a half points per game, and he loses 4-1. Three straight in a row because Jordan himself goes from averaging 35 points per game to only averaging 27 points per game. He goes from shooting 54% from the field to only 49% from the field. His team struggles because of him. He doesn't take the right shots. Everybody else on his team played better but Michael Jordan, and they got they got beat 4-1 versus a team with no all-NBA players, no all-defensive players on the roster. Yeah, that's, and, that's not the drop-off you're making it seem, though, because, okay, you're looking at this, the same That is a drop-off, okay? Travis. That is a big drop-off, Travis. 5% as opposed oh, wait, wait. to like 14 no, 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 it's, it's not It's not 5%. 35 to 27 is like 25% or 20% drop-off. In fact, he had to score 45 points per game the series before for his team to win that series. So okay. he, went from he went from scoring 45 to 27. LeBron averaged 26, 9, 7, 2, and 1 in the series you said he choked in against Boston. Yeah, he did choke the last three games. And, jo <laughs> and Jordan did too. Jordan's last three games... So Jordan, Jordan choking numbers looked way better than LeBron. So you're talking about 54% no. yeah. to 49%, right? 
No, okay. Jordan, still- Jordan, Jordan, Jordan went into game three, shot eight of 20, which is 40%, had only 24 points in that game, had five turnovers and three assists. His team got blown out 101 to 79 on his home floor. His first game at home versus Detroit after scoring 36 and, and, and uh, I think it was 29 of the games before that. Then he goes back into game four and you would say, oh, well, Michael Jordan's going to step up his game now. They need to get this win, right? No, he doesn't do that. He gives you 23 points per game off 22 shots. Okay. And Jordan still shot 49% for that series. Like, and LeBron shot 47 for that series, 46. Okay. Now, this is the 2008 season, right? Yeah, again, no, this is, this is two, we're talking about nine, the 2010 season versus 1988. Yeah, 2008 was worse. So, so Jordan goes, he gives you back-to-back games where he doesn't give you his 30 points per game, where he was averaging 35, where he was shooting well well above, uh, what's it called, 50%, and now he's shooting less than 50%. Then he goes into game five and gives you 25 points on 22 shots, shooting 45%. Where was this Jordan helping his team win? He should have gave the ball to Charles Oakley. Charles Oakley was shooting 64%, had 19 points and 15 rebounds. Why yeah. was he losing this game? Getting blown out again. Lost three straight games in the playoffs. Okay, but Jordan was still clearly the more efficient or the, uh, like what, the most efficient player on his team. Look at this. The only player who outshot him was Horace Grant that series at uh, 60%. Otherwise, he's better even when he's So he wasn't more down. efficient. So that means yeah, he wasn't more LeBron efficient, was. right? Okay. So LeBron... Like, he was more efficient than LeBron. Yes, he was more efficient because he shot, again, he shot 49% for the series, right? What did Jordan okay. shoot for that series? 47%, I'm sorry. Let me make sure. Let me double check this. Cause you, I mean, cause does you it have to always be uh, someone choking? Can it be... No, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's never common sense. No, it's, 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 ne- it's never common sense. No, it's never common sense. It's never... When we go in the playoffs against a great defensive team... They going to make it hard for the play, for the player. That's every poll. That is no, literally no, every no, no. single great score in NBA history. Look at the numbers. No, look at the games. When they go against great defensive teams of their time, their numbers and accuracy always regress. That's what great defensive teams do. Sturdy. If we go to LeBron James that playoff run right in 2010, right, but right before he faces. The, uh, the, the the Boston Celtics, he plays against the Chicago and he averages 31 points per game, right? And he shoots, he's nine and eight, right? That was his, and he was shooting 56% from the field. Jordan, in the same the same uh, playoff run, is the same as why I say Jordan choked as well, because if they're going to say LeBron choked, then so did Jordan. In that same playoff run, in 1988, against the Cleveland Cavaliers, Michael Jordan averaged 45 points per game, shooting 56% from the field. Averaging five rebounds and four and a half assists per game, right? Then he goes into the next series giving you 27 points per game. So who had the bigger choke? Who dropped up more? Who didn't represent their team more? LeBron went from 31 points to twenty uh, to 27 points per game. Jordan went from 45 to 27 points per game. Jordan went from 56% shooting to 49% shooting. LeBron went from 55% shooting to 45% shooting. Uh, what, LeBron. What, who, who choked? Clearly, LeBron, in every LeBron, his name is LeBron, LeBron won. LeBron won more games in that series. Jordan didn't win; only won one game. LeBron at least won two. Okay, so 2008 again, same team. LeBron 35 <laughs> again gets destroyed. 35 percent shooting again, uh-huh. and he still is taking by far the most uh, points in his team. Now, at what point? Here's the question: At what point do we say, like, we're just talking about names? Oh my God, four Hall of Famers on one team. Great, that's true. No, 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 Travis, no, Travis. What I said specifically is the team, especially yes. relative to that time. No, the, but, the Boston, go, no but if we go to 1989, when Jordan did the same thing, listen, let's 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 list no. off Jordan's series playoff. Let me ask you a question. Oh, no, 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 hold on, Travis. Curious. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, ask the question. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so I'm sorry, at what point? Bullshit. At what point do we ignore names and just go by production? No, once again, Travis, I I didn't mention a single name. I didn't say the Boston Celtics team was this, that, and third because the names. I'm mentioning what that team did. I'm responding so to you. But I, don't, I know I'm responding to you by it's just common sense. You're not the same regular season team are you on the playoffs. Those are two different types of style of basketball. In the playoffs, there's more game planning. In the playoffs, there's more physical play. 
in the playoffs yes, it, it's not indicative. So hold on, hold on. Once again, Travis, that's why I bring up common sense points that you completely ignore. Like, just because your team have a uh, I mean, better record than another team, you're not expected to beat that team in the playoffs. Period. That's why when I say a fact, the Bulls did not always have the best record in the league when they won those six championships. And yet, they still end up winning because they were the best playoff team. So when okay. I repeat the fact, when I repeat the fact, it's not choking when a all-time great scorer regress in his accuracy or his production when he goes up against the great defensive team of that time. That's actually common sense to understand, especially go out through NBA history. It happens to literally every all-time great scorer. Okay. At some point okay. when you go against, at some point when you go against a great defensive team. They're going to make shit harder for you because you are the best player on the opposing team. Lastly, Travis, I said this I said this before the beginning. You still have responded to it. Teams win in the playoffs. It's, that's why I gave you an example of Michael Jordan and the Bulls beating the Miami Heat in five games despite him shooting less than 40% from the field. Because they was, despite Jordan's lack of efficiency, despite Jordan's lack of accuracy, that at the end of the day, in the seven game series, the better team always win. So it's never one player that's it's never one player that's solely responsible for a team. Losing or winning. I don't care who it is. That's just common sense. No, but this is all I'm gonna just to prove it, we're gonna end it, it here because we have to get him out of here. No, no, it does make sense because again, you guys, you guys want to give LeBron the fault for losing against a team that is tough. But then when I bring up Michael Jordan, you're gonna bring up his team. Because when we go to Michael Jordan. He averages 44 points per game in, in the series versus Boston in 86. Then he averages 37, I mean 36 and, and 87 versus Boston. Then again, in the next year, he averages 45 points. Then he goes down to 27. You're going to tell me that's not choking? How he goes from averaging 35 plus against other teams, but then he goes up against Detroit, he only averages, he averages less than 30. That's a big drop. LeBron is not dropping that bad. LeBron went from averaging 29 to averaging 26. That's not a big drop. Then when you go to the, the, the next year, Jordan averaged 40 points per game. He averaged 39.8 against Cleveland. Then he averaged 36 against New York. Then he goes against Detroit. He averages less than 30 again, shooting less than 50%. Then in the next playoff series, the next year, against Milwaukee, 37 points per game. Philadelphia, 43 points per game. Then he goes up against Detroit and loses in that series, averaging 32 points per game. Every time Michael Jordan went up against the, the same team, you're going to say that's not choking, but Jordan is averaging 37, 40 points per game, Travis. He's averaging 40 and going up against a team and averaging 10 points less when he goes up against them. That is choking. And he's still fantastic that series. And it doesn't matter. And so, was, <laughs> and, so wait, and so was LeBron against Boston. And so was LeBron. A, yes, he was. He look, still was great. You can't say he was great. Yes, he it's was a side effect, it's a side effect of being Travis, a Jordan fan. No, this is a side effect of you being a Jordan fan. Jordan, I don't listen, know why. Travis, no. 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 Travis no. in 2008, no. LeBron James no. averaged, uh, in 2008, LeBron James averaged 27 points, six and a half rebounds, six, I mean, seven and a half assists versus uh, uh, Boston. That's good. That's fantastic. That's good. Uh, in the playoffs? Yes. He averaged 26 and a, 26.7, 6.4 rebounds, 7.6 assists per game. And he averaged two steals and a block per, in, per game in that playoff series. Michael was flying like an eagle. That's why. Are you saying but, that's but, bad, but, Travis? But he's going to say it's bad. He's going to say it's bad because he shot 30, because he shot 35% from the field versus a defensive player of the year, a team that had an all defensive player. When, Like I said, when Jordan is shooting bad as well, because Jordan shooting 47% compared to shooting 55 is bad. The same way LeBron going from 45 to 35 is bad. Jordan is not shooting well. He's, his team does not win if he's shooting 47% the same way LeBron's not winning if his team shoots 35%. That's choking. It's the same shit. Okay, no, it's not the same shit. So and, and Jordan's not facing the same defense. He's not facing the same, he's not facing the same uh, team, the same the scheme, none of that. The, the, again, the 1988 Detroit Pistons had no all-defensive players on their roster. The Chicago Bulls had a better defense than the Detroit Pistons in 1988. Jordan is the reason why they lost, because he choked. He averaged less than 30. He shot less than 50%, which is not what Jordan normally does, which means he choked. Damn. I just want the record to show that me and yeah, A.J. are saying two different things. That's all I'm saying. 
No, yeah. I'm saying if, if they want to say LeBron choked, so did Jordan. I don't say LeBron choked because we all know it's a team concept. That's why we don't mind LeBron James having his teammates. Jordan have a problem. Jordan fans have a problem with Le uh, Jordan having teammates. We can't praise Pippen. We can't praise Rodman. We can't praise uh, Ku Coach. We can't praise nobody because they think Michael Jordan went out there and played one on five and won every time that way. And that's a lie. Because we saw Jordan choke throughout the 80s, and he couldn't do it against the same team over and over again. LeBron never failed against the same team over and over again. He never did that. He beat <laughs> he Boston. Literally yeah. He beat Boston eventually more than once. He stuck he his beat, tongue out. He, he beat he Boston beat, in 2012. He beat, he beat him in 2011 when they had four All-Stars. <laughs> So, Jordan never had Jordan never beat a team with four All Stars. Boston in 2011 had four All Stars. Okay, and he beat Jordan them. Never beat Boston. <laughs> Jordan never beat Boston. Jordan never beat Boston. So if I was to say, okay, mm -hmm. well, okay, I'm let's just say okay. we have two box scores, right? Uh huh. And you know we're talking about the same exact box score, all right? Okay, so LeBron. Again, okay, I'm sorry. Take the way names. Take the names away, mm -hmm. and we see one player, right, mm -hmm. who's shooting horribly from the field. All of his other teammates and all the other starters are out shooting him, okay, on multiple series, right? And that's mm -hmm. not what you're going to see with Michael Jordan. Did his stats dip slightly? Sure, but he's still unquestionably, uh, again, either the most efficient player or the best player in his team. Not the case with LeBron on several of these players or these series that we're talking about. It's not like his efficiency was dipping 4 or 5% like it was with Michael Jordan. You're talking about 10, 14, 50% drops. Again, with this, and his team are outperforming him regularly. It's not Why like, do you keep like bringing up his team? Every series yeah. you brought up, LeBron James' team shot 40%. They shot for, The team what? shot 40% against Boston in 2008. They shot 40% in, against Boston in 2010. Every time you bring up LeBron's teammates, I'm looking at horrible shooting. We're looking at uh, 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 Big Z, 43%. Horrible. Delonte West, 42%. Horrible. Uh, what's yeah. it called? W Wally Zerbiak, 35%. Horrible. Daniel yeah. Gibson, 39%. Horrible. Sasha Pavlovich, 40%. Horrible. The team Bears shot 40%. Joe Smith, uh, yeah, that's the only one. And if we go to Jordan, it's the same. And we so go to Jordan's all team. Better than LeBron. No, all no. And we, go, and we go to Jordan's team in 1988 versus Detroit. Was Jordan's team mm -hmm. shooting that bad? Did mm -hmm. Jordan's team shoot 40% from the field? He's Nobody else shot Jordan else. except for Horace Brown. Right. Jordan's, team shot, Jordan's team shot 44% from the field. Jordan had players like Scottie Pippen shooting 46% from the field. Horace Grant was shooting 60% from the field. Okay. Why weren't they getting more shots? Why was Jordan taking 25 shots per game or 24 shots a game? LeBron wasn't taking 24 shots per game. Yeah, your because he wasn't, yeah, because he wasn't the most efficient player on the court. Jordan still when was. Did, when did Virgil huh? shoot 50%? Where, where do you see that at? For what series? Shot, For the box in court? that series. In the series, he shot, he shot 50% shooting uh taking 28 shots in a seven game series so taking four shots per game he shot he took four shots per game shot 50 percent the difference Wait. is even if even if jordan had a subpart series he's still the what best player in his team lebron no. arguably so lebron lebron's taking lebron's taking less shots per game than michael jordan all right is this he's 2010 so you and he's averaging two, no. he's averaging only two less points than michael jordan while shooting like you said he's shooting worse than jordan and he's he averaged 27 jordan averaged 29. So you don't think LeBron was the best No, player. Jordan averaged 27. Jordan averaged the same amount of points as him shooting 49%. Travis, is this 2010 for Edna Cervares out against Boston Celtics? No, 2008. No. 2008. Okay. 2008. All right. I was like, what? But the Bulls didn't shoot 40% as a team. The Bulls shot 43% as a team. Okay. And, you, and you're going to say that was because of Michael, correct? Because Michael was doing that, right? Is that what you're going to say? Am I going to say that? No, he was the second most efficient player on his team. LeBron like wasn't even top, like, top eight here. That's what I'm saying. It's like you can see a clear discrepancy as far as obviously it was a different eras, different circumstances. Absolutely. Am uh -huh. I saying that a lot of those teams that Mike faced were as good defensively as the Celtics? No. But it's all about you can't just say that one team going against another is expected to lose simply because of the mystique or the players. Is it different in the playoffs? I agree with Sturdy. Absolutely. But when your team is putting up great defensive numbers, again, uh, above average offensive numbers the entire season, I don't care what the names are. What's going to happen? Look at the box score. What's the minutiae? But that applies to 88. Jordan's it team does. had the best defense. Okay. Was Jordan right. playing so, as All right, so we're ending here. So we're going to end it here. You say LeBron choked 2008 and 2010. Are you also saying Jordan choked 88 and 89?
Are you on mute? He had to mute himself for a second. There's some, okay, guys, well, there's some bullshit on my ass. You are, oh, look at you. Uh oh. Uh oh. That, 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 watch out, Pornhub. <laughs> it's your listen, we're gonna, listen, we're gonna, we're gonna end it here. That 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 means we gotta end it. Travis is getting phone calls. He got his lady calling him. We gonna get up out of here. Listen, y'all gotta stop this LeBron choking shit. But we know LeBron is just the greatest player ever. Travis has done his best. Hopefully, we can get Craig and another MJ delegate to help you out because. They're in the comments giving you props, Travis, but you know yes, we are going to I'm camp. tanking like seven people every week. Like, come help me out. Like, you, know, you, was, you, was, you, was, you was on my you was on Michael Jordan fans of the best page the other day. What, dude, what, what's up did you see that? that? I I was exposing Dark for like a straight hour in your honor, man. Like, oh my God, you said Jordan Hub, the Jordan Hub. There you go, Jordan Hub. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Anyways, listen, y'all. It's been a great show. I want to thank the panelists again. Thanks for Sturdy showing up. Thanks for Ishmael, Twin Man, King John. Thank you guys again in the comments. Shout out to everybody that's following us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter, um, also Discord. You guys know what we do here. We are the Goat James Kingdom channel. This is the Goat James Kingdom show with B. Lee and A. Johnny. We're going to end our Sunday by letting you guys know that LeBron's the greatest offensive player. He's the greatest defensive perimeter player. And he's the greatest player of all time. We've proven all of this within a week. <laughs> okay? Disagree this is, with the second part. The, <laughs> this is what we do in Goat James Kingdom. We talk basketball. We talk about the greatness of basketball. We're tired of y'all lies. We're tired of your myths. We're tired of the 1900s. We done with the 90s. We done with the 80s. We done with all that bullshit. So next week, we'll have another great show, another great topic. Thanks, gentlemen. You guys are not going to get your last word in today. It's over with. We are out of here. You guys enjoy your Sunday. Peace and blessings. This is Goat James Kingdom. See y'all next week. Everybody be safe out there. He's out.